exclusive is a presentation of the Suburban Sports Network, a production of Suburban Community Television, Doylestown. Sports Network Fall Sports Season is sponsored in part by Sound Advice, Cross Keys Cafe, Hatboro Collision, Conti Inn, The Pipersville Inn, Gem Jewelers, Giffy Car Wash, New Britain Inn, The Snicker Place, Alaska Travel Outborn Ski Tours, The Dry Sink, etc., Bucks County Community College. The Grease Monkey, The Amber Inn, For Males Tuxedo, also buys a Luffy painting. Welcome to a gorgeous Thanksgiving morning here at War Memorial Field in Doylestown. I'm Bob Lang along with Bob Friedman and Tom Grotar, bringing you the Thanksgiving Day Classic Central Bucks West against Central Bucks East, the 20th renewal of this long-standing series with the Bucks, Bob, having a 16-2-1 lead in the series. And of course, this is a far cry from last Thanksgiving Day when it was snowed out and had to be played the... Saturday afterwards. No, I actually wasn't snowed out last year. We actually did play that game. Did you? Okay. Yeah. We I was snowed play. out. You were snowed out. You couldn't make it up, but I, we did the game. Hi, everybody. That was a game that saw West beat East 14 to nothing. It snowed the night before. It was a bitterly cold morning as opposed to today where it is just gorgeous. Temperatures are going to be up into the mid to upper 60s, maybe up 70 by the end of the day. And it is like a late summer day rather than a late fall day. Of course, as you mentioned, 16-2-1 uh, West, well in control. Of this, uh, but there have been some in this series, but there have been some exciting games, especially two years, years ago. ago. Yeah, that was when the Patriots snapped Central Bucks West's long winning streak with that 14-all tie. As you see, the Bucks players on the sidelines and the CB West band is performing right now and these are two teams that have fairly similar records I think uh, both maybe are, are happy as far as the way the season has gone but when these two teams play I think almost anything can or will happen and I suspect this should be a fairly close game I mean the two teams are fairly evenly matched and uh, ironically if there's any surprise, it would have to be the Bucks who have only lost the one game that was done here on the Berman table against Council Rock. But other than that, other than one game early in the year against Plymouth White Marks, which they won 14-13, the Bucks have easily handled almost all their opposition. And uh, yeah, that's true. And I think that uh, it should be a very exciting game. We'll be right back after some very important messages. Stick around. If you're one of those people who still thinks sound advice in Doylestown is just the compact disc center, think again. Because sound advice has what you're looking for in car electronics. And with brand names like Sony, Concord, Soundstream, and even Metrophone, it's plain to see why sound advice is the new leader in car electronics sales and installation. Sound advice for simply the best advice on sound. Route 611, a quarter mile south of Route 313 in Cross Keys, Doylestown. It's new, it's now, it's hot, it's cold, it's Krosky's Cafe, and you've got to check it out. For breakfast, lunch, or catering, Krosky's Cafe is there for you, with personalized service and a full-line deli. Not to mention fax lines, indoor, outdoor seating, and prices and portions that will keep you coming back to Krosky's Cafe. For over 20 years, Delcrest has provided patients and health professionals with quality supplies and equipment from leading manufacturers, including a complete line of Lumex products. Featured this fall are specials on bath and walking aids by Lumex. 
you're sure to find a knowledgeable and trained sales staff to give you the personal attention you need at any of Delcrest's five locations. Visit Delcrest at their newest location, Bartimese Plaza in Doylestown. Delcrest, delivering customer satisfaction. Attention sports and pizza fans. Stop by Joe's Pizza and mention the final score of this East-West game and a buy one, get one free lunch or dinner is yours. Yes, just mention the final score of this East-West game and a buy one, get one free lunch or dinner is yours. Offer expires end of December. For over 33 years now, Eagles Peak Spring Water has been the answer for homes and businesses alike. Serving all of Bucks and Eastern Montgomery Counties, delivery is free for both established and new accounts. Eagles Peak now offers the attractive and durable ceramic bottled water dispenser pictured here. The removable faucet allows easy cleaning, and the solid oak stand is oil finished for enduring beauty. So why not call Eagles Peak Spring Water's toll-free number and ask about free delivery for your home or office? The staff at Eagles Peak wishes you and yours a safe and happy holiday season. Back at War Memorial Field in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, Bob Friedman along with Bob Lang and Tom Drotar. Bob, uh, a little bit about some of the players that we're going to see in this game. We have some exciting quarterbacks to start out with. Well, that's for sure. For the Bucks, it is Greg Moylan who will be the signal caller and, of course, Mike Morelli for the Patriots. There you see the Bucks underneath the one goal post and Patriots underneath the other. And how these two individuals go will pretty much determine the game. There are some good running backs, but... Yeah, face it, the quarterbacks are the one who get the limelight, who get the blame, and who also get the credit for uh, whatever happens on the field. And thus far, both of them have done extremely well this year. And the three has to be watched out for as well. Mr. Sonsini. Number 24, Mike Hefner. Let's go to war for some accomplish right now as we have the teams introduced. Number 32, and Captain Mike Schwab. Number 33, Brian Titus. Number 37, Tim Dunn. Number 38, the captain, Ed West. Number 50, Eric King. Number 53, Tom Meehan. Number 60, Jason Baker. Number 64, Lee Ferguson. Number 66, Bill Green. Number 71, Mike Brasino. Number 73, the captain, Mike Matt Heckler. Number 77, Tom Murphy. Number 77, Tony Quarren. Number 79, Carl Hahn. Number 81, Rich Sawyer. Number 88, Tony Costello. Number 92, Rob Robinson. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Larry Green and the Patriots of CBE. And now the Bucks of Central Buck West. Wearing number seven, Ed Perrenian. Wearing number 12, Willie Chloe. Number 20, Rick Christensen. Number 21, Mike Bell. Number 24, the captain, Chris Warren. Number 34, the captain, Jack Bolotri. Number 71, Craig Lozada. Number 53, Brian Russell. Number 65, Scott Hagen. Number 66, Pete Hoffman. Number 68, Tom Jaworski. Number 72, John Rocky. Number 76, Jay Bauer. Number 80, Dan Vick. Number 88, Greg Paulson. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Mike Hatton and the Bucks of Stevie West. We're back at the introduction of the seniors and the various teams. Down on the field is our man Tom Drotar. And let's see if we can get an idea from Tom as to just what the field conditions are like right now. You there, Tom? I'm here, Bob. The field conditions are absolutely perfect. We haven't had any rain in a few days, so there's really no problem. The field is in as good a shape as it can be. And like you said, with the weather uh, going to be the way it is, 
It's an absolutely perfect day for high school football. One thing I wanted to mention was that the difference between this game and the years, the games in the past, the fact that this game is being played here at War Memorial Field as opposed to at Delaware Valley College. The last time they played the game here was in 1978. Central Bucks won that game 46 to 12. CB uh, East is hoping that history doesn't repeat itself today. Bob? Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Mr. and a uh, good report on the field. As the captains are coming to the middle of the field for the, for the toss. Bob, what can we look for today? Well, being the last game of the year for both these schools, uh, I think the coaches will probably pull out all the stops. Uh, as we mentioned, East has only won this game twice, and you can be sure that that sort of sticks in their craw a little bit, where West has dominated them. And the last time East won this game was in 1983, and they won it 7-6. to So it has been total domination by the Bucks, and we have the coin toss. It looks like East has won the toss. They will get the football first. And I think the first series really is uh, at the start of the game and maybe the start of the second half can be very important to sort of set the tone. So it'll be interesting to see how they come out and, you know, exactly how East comes out, whether they, uh, a little nervousness too, I think is sometimes a problem, but that usually lasts until about the first hit. Yeah, that really is what it takes. It just, you want to get that first pop underway and get a hit, you know, get, get feeling into the game, get the blood flowing thrown through there. They're used to playing games in the late afternoon or the evening. They're not used to playing games at 11 o'clock in the morning. And of course, on both sides is the annual handshake. On both sides, these are kids who have been playing ball since their sandlot days, peeing football. They dream of this day. They dream of being on the field. And we'll be ready for that game after the kickoff right after these messages. Honey, I'm home. Hi, dear. Hey, Dad, can I take the Keenan Mercedes tonight? No, but you can take the Keenan Honda, that is, if you don't mind driving a brand new Accord. Sure, Dad, no problem. Be back by midnight. Uh, by 11. Honey, I've got to get a few things for dinner. Oh, Jimmy took the Keenan Honda. I've got to take the Mercedes. Hey, everybody, I'm home. Introducing Keenan Honda in Doylestown. It comes from a very good family. Keenan Honda. Quality is our driving force. Where to go in Doylestown for a great sports bar? That's the Amber Inn at the corner of Shule and Doyle Avenue. Featuring the area's hottest bands every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, plus a video box and cable sports every night of the week. The Amber Inn, where there are no strangers, only friends you haven't met yet. Nice looking car, Mike. Is it new? No, it's the same car that was in the accident. Hatboro Collision made it look like new again. They quoted me a price and stuck to it. They used their state-of-the-art equipment and certified technicians to make the car look like new. They helped me get a low-cost rental car, and best of all, it took just one phone call, and the friendly office staff did the rest. They got the money from the insurance company and took care of all that paperwork. For credibility, quality, and service in auto body repair, come see Mickey and Jerry at Hatboro Collision. O'Fally's Crab House brings the shore to Bucks County with its casual dining and nautical ambiance. Specializing in Maryland-style hard-shell crabs, stop by Tuesday nights for all-you-can-eat. Wednesdays are for shrimp lovers, and again, it's all-you-can-eat. Alaskan crab legs are the special Thursdays, and yes, it's all-you-can-eat. But O'Fally's offers more than just endless plates of seafood. They also feature live entertainment Wednesday through Saturday. O'Fally's is open seven days, serving dinner from 4 until 11, Monday through Saturday, Sunday from 4 until 9. Come see how O'Fally's brings the shore to Bucks County. Are you tired of going to the malls, trying to find the styles you want, only to find outrageous prices? The Sneaker Place in Doyle Town and Newtown have their styles from Nike, Asics, Keds, and more, and at discounted prices. We're open seven days and five nights for your convenience. Suburban Sports Network presents the 1990 Thanksgiving Day Football Classic featuring the Central Box East Patriots versus the Central Box West Bucks from War Memorial Field in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Hello everyone, I'm Bob Friedemann and with me Bob Lang and on the field will be Tom Drotar and we're ready for kickoff with Bob Lang. 
Okay, and this kickoff is brought to you by Bucks County Community College, offering quality, affordable educational opportunities for all ages. Bucks has a program designed for your needs. Call them today. Bucks County Community College, what education is meant to be. And that kickoff, Bob, went into the end zone, so the Patriots will start at their own 20. Dave Zerbe watched it go in and out of the end zone, and that's where Mike Morelli will bring his team up. Started off, quick handoff underneath to Sean Lenz. Lenz will get about five. He'll go out to the 25, so we're underway. We're underway with uh, the uh, annual East-West Football Classic. They're going into no huddle offense, are the uh -huh. Patriots. Morelli looking. It throws wide to Zobi, who's got it. He'll have the first down out at the 32-yard line. Nice pass by Morelli. A, a non-interceptable take ball out to the sideline. Zobi got it with control with one hand. Brought it in, gets the first down. So, East gets the quick first down. Well, as we said, uh, may see some strange things here and definitely have as the Patriots started out with the no huddle offense. We go first and 10 again. And Titus, who does not get very much, maybe a yard or maybe even lost a yard on the play, is that time the Patriots were unable to get anywhere. So it'll be a loss of a yard. Tackle Jack Lockery. Second and 11. Second and 11 is a good defensive play by C.B. West. Our man Tom Drotar walking around the field getting a, a feel for things in the game right now. We'll be having reports from him throughout the game. Morelli obviously wants it to, wants Zerby on the other side and moves there. Back to pass Morelli. He's looking for Zerby. He's tackled by Jazzy he throws. He throws for Brian Pennecal who can't come up with the ball. A nice defensive play by the Bucks, and the Bucks, you know, they really came out pumped up. It looked like he's came out ready for business, but the Bucks really came out higher than a kite. Well, that time we should remind everyone this is not the NFL. There's no such thing as in the grasp and control, and Morelli was able to get the ball off even as he was going down. Third down, we'll call it a long 10, maybe a short 11. Ball resting at the 32-yard line of East early in the game. Blake to join us for this Thanksgiving Day Classic. Morelli back to pass again. Short drop. He's under the line. The ball is East. Picked up by West. And West gets the first pick of the game. And a blitz. The ball is not loose, but his number 51 coming in. And that was Mike Bell. The ball recovered by Ryan Moore. And West will take over. On the field, we have Tom Grotar. Tom? I just wanted to mention the fact that a lot of times you think when you receive the ball at the beginning of the game that it's an advantage. Central Bucks West, when they defer and get the ball in the second half, have a 98% winning percentage. Dominating defense is the reason why, and you can see why that is. Back to you, Bob. Thanks, Tom. We're first and 10 ball at the just outside the 20-yard line. The Bucks. Greg Moreland, two men go in motion. Sonsini moves back to the tailback position. Pitch to Sonsini, going wide. He's heading in, he's going to be brought down for a loss of about three on the tackle turn on. Great defensive play by the Patriots. Yes, indeed. That time the linebacker really came up nicely on the play. Hahn shot the gap and was able to get Sonsini almost as soon as he got the ball. And they're going to lose about four yards on the play to make it a second and 14. 9.50 to go in this first quarter. No score. East has just fumbled the ball away to West, and we're going to have a quick timeout, an official timeout, and only be a brief one here, as they do have a uh, shoelace, shoelace being, tied. being tied up. But the first big break of the game, of course, Bob, went to the Patriots, and now it's up to them to take advantage of it, and this is where the East defense is really under the gun. I'm a little surprised they didn't go for the end zone in the first play. A lot of teams will do that. At any rate, second down, 12 to go. Single setback. Well, so Cena comes in motion. He'll take the hand up underneath that counter play. Won't get much. That play has worked very well for them over the years, but he's seen it enough times that they were ready for it. So Cena took the hand off, took it over the 20 to about the 19 will make it third and about eight. Ed West on the tackle there. 
And we can talk about the kicker for West End Perinian. Has a good foot. And he has the wind in his back, you can see by the flag. That is the third and eight. And we have a flag down here. We have too much time here. Or possibly someone may have lined up in the it's neutral. It's from the though. side judge, which is usually someone lining up in the neutral. The back judge will usually be the one to call to delay a game. It is offside. They line up in front of the ball, so it'll take them back five more yards. After the 24-yard line, now it'll be third, third down and 13. Both defenses doing a good job early on. Third down, well, I think Coach is almost... Now we have C.B. West taking timeout. And during this timeout, let's take a break ourselves. We'll be right back. No matter what kind of car you drive, drive it into Jiffy Car Wash. You'll get full service attention. Jiffy Car Wash will vacuum the inside of your car, wash the windows inside and out, even clean the door jams. There are manager specials daily. Wednesday, senior citizens get 20% off. And happy hour is Monday through Friday, 5.30 to 6.30. Exterior wash, only $3.99. Jiffy Car Wash is located just below Pizza Hut on South Main Street in Doylestown. Have you been a part of a weight loss team that doesn't help you win by losing weight? Think about joining our team and becoming an active participant in managing your weight. The Medical Weight Management Center of Doylestown Hospital provides the medical support you need to be a winner in life. If your last weight loss team let you down, then take a look at our medical professionals who can help you successfully manage your weight. Call the Medical Weight Management Center of Doylestown Hospital today at 345-1819. In the country collection at the dry sink, you'll find something special for you or that special someone. You'll love the charm of our handcrafted furniture, unique gifts and decorative accessories. So come on down and poke around the biggest little country stores to be found. Both stores open seven days and Friday nights till nine. Back to the action. Bob Freeman has thrown it to the end zone and incomplete. Sonsini saying he was tripped, but that ball was not catchable. So it'll bring down a fourth down as Coach Benton went and tossed the players. It looks like he's talking to the official first. Yeah, I think Bobby wanted to find out exactly who the penalty was on and what exactly it was for. But I think what it was, I think someone lined up in the neutral zone. That's an automatic offside. It's an automatic offside. Now, this is going to be a long kick, but as we said, there is a wind down on the field, and it is the kicker's back. No angle. Ed Perinian from 42 yards out kicks it. He's got the distance, but it's no good at all to the left. Boy, did he have the distance. That would have been good from about 55. Good strong leg. He just, uh, as soccer kickers are wont to do at times, Bob, they tend to hook it a little bit, and I think that's what happened. So, East dodges the bullet after the early turnover. West is unable to score as the Patriot defense comes up big, and the offense will come onto the field again. Taking over at their own 20, with 8.47 to go in this first quarter. Bob Friedman along with Bob Lang and Tom Drotar. Glad you could join us as being just smothered behind the line of scrimmage is Brian Titus carrying the ball. Good surge by the defensive line of West. Definitely. I, I think we're going to see the team settle down a little bit. I think sometimes that first series is a little bit hyper, and I, I really think they may start to settle down a little bit more here. Second down and ten ball still resting on the 20 yard line. Taxi split. Zerby goes out wide left. Penn foul the right. They have a flag. Is this too much time? No. Like no, what, uh, what happened is Tom Murphy lifted up and actually lifted up to, to look back at Morelli which of course after you're set it's a penalty and I think we're going to maybe see for a little bit some of these little type five yard type penalties where the players may be a little bit over anxious. Mike Morelli was the engineer of that uh, tie two years ago. If you remember Sean Moylan quarterback for the Bucks at that time went out injured a big loss Last year, it was Morelli who uh, was who uh, was uh, dinged a little bit, and it cost the uh, it cost the Patriots big time. Everybody sees me healthy today. Morelli up under center. It'll be second down, 15. This lens moves from the uh, bottom to the top of your screen, and now a quarterback draw. Morelli takes it out to the back, a little bit over the original line of scrimmage. 
out to the 21 yard line. I'll make a third and nine. Look like a design play, Bob. Well, I think it was. He he went back from the center. He saw the opening really between his right guard and tackle. Saw the hole there and did not hesitate and went right to it and picked up a nice six yards on the play. And they'll make it a third down and nine as, of course, they have the five yards back to the penalty. And then back to split. And Lenz goes in motion again. Back to pass, Morelli. Has a little time, now he does. Steps out and he is left down by Jack Lockery. Good play by Lockery on the shoot top tackle. Sack of Morelli, and that was a coverage sack, Bob. That definitely was a coverage sack. Morelli, actually, if he'd been able to shake that shoot top tackle there, he might have been able to get the first down, but now it's gonna be a punt for the Patriots, and as you mentioned, there is a pretty good win down the field. Maybe get an idea from Tom Grotar in a bit exactly how strong it might be. Ball is kicking, it's oh. not a very good kick. I'm gonna bounce a little bit, and it takes a big Patriot bounce and goes over the 50 down to about the 45 yard line. So uh, not such a great kick lengthwise, but the bounce was terrific. Took about a 20 yard bounce for the Patriots. And the rest will take over at their own 45 yard line. Yeah, Titus, I'm sure, is very happy with that. I mean, he, that was ended up about a 35 or so yard punt of which most of it rolled. Well, one thing you got to be careful of, you have Matt Sonsini, and he is so dangerous on the punt returns. Cleveland also very good, and they were both back there. Handoff goes to Cleveland this time, breaks through the initial line of scrimmage, and he's gliding, gliding over midfield, close to the first down. Good running by Chris Cleveland. Just off his right side, and he kept those legs going, and good surge by the offensive line, and the Bucks got nine yards on the play for Cleveland. Sadly enough for the Bucs, this will be their last game of the year, as it appears that Ridley will go into the state playoff rather than the CB West. That one loss to Council Rock really cost him. The handoff, second down, he's got the first down, driving further is Dave Binder, and he drives it over the 40 to the 37 yard line. Let's tell you, good running now. He's got a pullback? Got a pullback ready. Binder fixing his helmet up. He, uh, has an equipment adjustment there, but a nice run there. Two real nice runs, uh, first by Cleveland, now by Binder. What that does is it sets up the passing game later on if they want to. First and 10, ball resting at the 37-yard line. Single setback is Binder. The handoff goes to him off the left side, and he picks it over the 35 to about the 33. Down on the field, let's go to Tom Drotar for a moment. Bob, one of the things you mentioned was the wind. It's really not a factor, as you can see. It's not really blowing very hard, though. If you look at the flag back there, which you guys are looking at, it might be a little bit deceiving, but it's not going to be a factor for the passing game. Bob? Okay. Tom, uh, the field itself, it looks like it's soft in the middle. It's, it's all dirt there. Did you get a chance to walk out there at all? Yeah, I walked out. It's actually not very soft at all. I think after playing the whole season on it, it's a little bit beat up, and it's pretty hard, actually, but it's not bad for playing football. Okay, thank you, Tom. Handoff underneath now again goes to Cleveland, and he is just smothered. He'll get maybe a yard. Brian Pentecost on the finishing tackle, but the lead man up there was uh, Paul Jensen coming in, making the tackle make it third and about four yards to go. Ball resting now at the 40 with, at 30. We'll give him about a yard on the game. No, he was down. Well, I have a feeling uh, the Bucks have decided to try and grind it out here on the ground. And we could be in four down territory, which means they may have two downs to get three yards. They had that running look and up to go in the motion, but they were not set yet. Now they're into it. Hand off to Titus, and he's not, he, I tell you, Titus Finder, he's not going to get a thing. I'll get it right. He'll get about half of what they needed. Yeah, he'll get, with a little bit of a push, a good drive at the end. Finder got about two, bring it to the 28-yard line. It'll be a fourth down. Now, they're going to measure, it appears. that They may have asked for a measurement. They may be closer than we thought. I also think Coach Petten may want to see exactly how far they have to go to determine you know, the other type play. That time they went to a, uh, a full T backfield with the three backs. Yeah. 
Initially, they started in that full house and then uh, split them. <clears throat> it looks like they may have it, Bob. Yeah, just a little close, sh though. They're just short. Now, again, Peranian has the foot to kick here, but I think Coach Benton's going to go for it. Yeah, he's, he's, talking, he's talking to Moylan. Well, you're, you're looking at about a 45-yarder, which he can hit, but I, I think with a foot to go, and it's not a great angle either. No, but I think with the foot to go, uh, Coach Petten feels that they can... Let's see if Moylan pulls his own number and just follows his center. Early game, Shaver, fourth down and less than a yard to go. That's again in a key. The handoff again goes to Geiner, and he's got it. Initial contact stopped him, but driving forward, he lunged forward. He only needed to get about the length of the football, and he got out there and he got it. Was that Binder or was that... Uh, yeah, that was Binder. It was Hahn who made the initial hit low, but uh, Binder did a good job of keeping those legs driving. I was watching Fassbender, Chris Fassbender, with a good block. Let's take a look at it again. Now you can see he was hit low, but what he did is he just leaned that body forward and actually picked up the first down easily. Let's see if they go for Santini for a long pass here. First down and 10, ball resting at the 26-yard line. Pink reverse, and they're going to pass off of it. He's got a man clean oh, just off his fingertips. And Bob, it looked like a catchable ball. Yeah, it was a catchable ball by Cleveland. I think he may have jumped when he really didn't have to. And it, it almost looked like he may have... Sh Short on it, but actually, Bob, it makes no difference at all because we're going to have a holding penalty against the Bucks. So, even if he caught it, it would have been brought back. That's right. There is the flag did come down. It is a hold against CV West. Going to bring it back to the 36 yard, 37 yard line. So it'll be first and 20. Now this is a situation where you. Don't necessarily go all 20. You just try and pick up, you know, seven, eight, maybe 10 yards if you can. Sonsini split wide to the left. He's dangerous out there. He's on single coverage right now. Dave Zerbe on him. And it's the odd. Oh, it was the uh, the flanker. Just a quick pass to the flanker, and Sonsini just had the ball go off his pads. You won't see that very often. He's got a good pair of hands on him. But I'll tell you, he would have had to do a lot of dancing to get away from that because the play was a little looked a little slow to develop and there were three white shirts bearing down on him. Well, the other thing, they split three receivers to the short side on the right to try and single up Sonsini. He may have looked up a little bit to see what kind of room he might have had. Roman Fitzmartin now split to the left. And Sonsini moves into motion again, back to pass and under a big rush and down he goes. Down he goes under the rush of Ed West, who got in there and brought down Moylan. And now they got a third and about a half of Doyle's down to go. Back all the way to their 45-yard line. So that's a loss of another eight. Now here you're going to see West just come in on a blitz as Moylan rolls. No, let's say 26, 27. Third and 26 it is. Ball resting at the 45-yard line. Single setback now. That's Binder. And that counter handoff underneath the Cleveland. He's not going to get anything on this. East knows that play all too well, as I mentioned earlier. It'll bring up a fourth down. So the East defense bent certainly did not break the holding penalty. A big break for them. Brings up fourth and long. And we'll have a throw. We will have our first CB West punt. Off the 43. Well, now we're going to start playing a little bit of the field position game where the Bucks would certainly like to pin the Patriots deep. There's Coach Petten. And you see Dave Zerby, one of the return men. Warren with a beautiful punt. It's going to get into the end zone. I do believe, oh yes, the beauty of a punt. High spiral turned over. Went into the end zone and East will take over again for the third time right around that 20 yard line. Exactly. They've had three possessions and three times they've started their own 20. The lone break, really, of the first quarter came on a fumble by Moreland. It was recovered by the Bucks at the East 20, but the field goal attempt was just a little bit wide, and the defenses have really dominated. 
Baxter in the eye. Hand up goes off to Titus. Titus kicks it out over the 20 to about the 23 yard line. And ironically, Bob, we've had just one first down thus far in the first quarter as we approach the final minute of play. One first down by each team is correct as the, uh, I'm actually, excuse me, I think there's two first downs by one, West. One for each. No, I think West has only had the one on the last drive. Well, at any rate, there's 50 seconds to go in the quarter. No score. Fox again in the eye. Lenz is the tailback this time. The pitch goes to Lenz. Breaks out over the 25 to the 27-yard line. We'll bring up a third and short. Just over a half a minute to go. We may we'll probably be able to get one more playoff before the end of the quarter. Get on the play. Stop by the 51 right now. So with a third and one, a yard. I have defense. Morelli oh, talking to his group. Let's see if Titus carries it. Is Titus in there? Yeah, Titus is not. Jesus, it's not Titus. It's uh, Rick Dorton, the up back. Now moving out to a wing is Lenz. And there's movement. Well, did the clock expire before we had movement, though? The flags are on the field. They're going to call the event. I think they're going to check and see, though, if the, if the quarter ended before that may have happened. Let's wait for our call from the official. Yep. Now we have what they call one untimed down. Yeah, the quarter cannot end on a penalty, so you have to run, you have to run one more play. Instead of third and a yard, now it's third and really a long six and a short seven. So that's certainly going to change Coach Green's play call here. So now it's third down instead of one. I don't know how it's third and seven, but it's third and seven. I'm going to give it's third and seven. Back to pass Morelli, and he's going down. He's going down right away into the arm. But Ryan Moore, and we've come to the end of the first quarter. I do believe. No, they. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's some confusion. They're already into the second quarter. Here we go. We've come to the end of the first quarter. The quarter that has seen both teams not able to move the ball too well. We've come to the end of quarter one, number one. There's your story. Bucks County's best kept secret isn't a secret anymore. The Warrington Motor Lodge is your perfect getaway from the everyday. All rooms are tastefully decorated and moderately priced. For that special evening for two, book their premier suite with an in-room whirlpool. And why not bring along 500 of your closest friends? The Warrington has banquet and meeting facilities to accommodate from 30 to 500 people. Don't forget to stop by Generations for casual dining at its finest. So for dining, lodging, weddings, meetings, banquets, reunions, and celebrations, the Warrington. American Rentals is there for all of your fall cleanup chores. Whether you're a homeowner or in light construction, the equipment is yours till the job is done. Items such as spiker aerators, log splitters, thatchers, and much, much more. American Rentals wishes both teams and everyone a very happy Thanksgiving. Stop into Michael's Restaurant in Montgomeryville. Michael's is open every day from 6 a.m. till midnight, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There are deli specials and baking is done on the premises at Michael's Restaurant is 400 feet north of the Five Points intersection. Back to second quarter action. Punt goes to Sonsini, who fumbles the ball. And who's got it at the 45-yard line? It will belong to the Patriots. Well, I'll tell you, I have not seen Sonsini have a day like this ever. He drops one pass and fumbles the ball. I don't know what it is, but uh, Matt just having a tough time early on. Well, Kurt Hahn recovered the fumble with good coverage. And that punt went to Sonsini and hey, even the even the best of us have these kinds of days. I'm sure he'll be heard from before the end of the game. Hey, anyway, first down. Finder goes in motion from his tailback spot. Uh, excuse me, uh Titus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and a handoff underneath. I'll get this right. I wish they wouldn't both wear 33. It's so confusing. Let's take our, let's go down to Tom Drucker, who has Greg Moylan with him. Tom? Thank you, Bob. I am with Greg Moylan, the quarterback. Greg, 
coming into the game, what were some of the things that you expected to do offensively against CB East? Well, we were trying to run off talk off because we knew we knew they had a real good corner, Mike Schwab. And we knew we had a tough time getting outside, so, so our main goal was to get off the tack line and up the mid on them. What do you think you're going to have to do now? It seems like they've shut you down pretty well. You had the good field position because of the fumble, but uh, you think you're going to have to go to the air a little bit? Well, I definitely think we can pass on these. I mean, but if, just as long as the line holds up, I think, I think we will definitely go to the air. Do you think East is the best team you played against this year? Oh, definitely, yes. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Bob? Okay, back to the R the action. Thanks a lot, Tom and, uh, and Greg Morlin. As you saw the pass to Sean Lenz for a first down moving inside Buck territory to the 40-yard line. Yeah, 13-yard gain, and they had success early with that short pass, Bob, and I, I think we may see the Patriots stay with that. That's in the eye again. And now Titus goes in motion as he did on the first play after the uh, recovery fumble. Well, hand off for the counter play a la West. And this is Lenz giving a little taste of their own medicine. He gets the ball over the 35 to the 33 yard line. And this is the first solid sustained in each drive as they were aided, of course, by the fumble by Santini. But they moved the ball as deep into the Buck territory as they've been all game with 10, 15 to go in the hand. Well, this game, I think ahead of time, we would have said Kate would come down to breaks, and thus far it has. Looks like an audible here. Lenz moves out to the wing. Penacal wide, split left. For his second down, about four. Handoff underneath. And going for the first down is Rick Dortone. And he gets it inside the 30 down to about the 27. Dortone with a good little bit of a crack off the right side of the line gets it to the 27. It'll be first and 10. And they're wide again. It's Penacal. They have a double wide left, but the handoff goes to Lenz underneath. And they'll take it to about the 25 for a game of about, we call it a long, we'll call it a three yard game inside the 25 will make it second and seven. So what the Patriots appear to be trying to do, Bob, is they're showing some different type formations and actually running off what appear to be passing type formations. Trying to maybe spread that Bucks defense and they've been fairly successful in spreading them and then running in, the, in those creases inside. Second down and seven. Again, Penacal split wide. Lens this time sets up in the slot. And it's a pass, and that's a fumble, I do believe. Are they going to call it a fumble? No, they're going to call it an incomplete pass, and I'm really surprised. Because that looked like a lateral. I think he was not even maybe a little bit ahead of him. But Titus there, the cardinal sin of any receiver, and that is you take your eye off the ball and you look up to see what sort of running room you may have. Well, the side judge is right there, so he calling the pass immediately. But when it third down, seven to go. Ball resting at the 25 yard line. Again in, this, in the wing is uh, Lenz. Back to pass Morelli under a good rush. Under a tough rush, and he's gonna be down outside the 25 yard line, and there goes the field goal. Well, every time that the Patriots have had to pass, that the Bucks knew it, they come and they blitz, and they've really given Morelli problems. And that time he was running for his life from the start as they're going to lose almost 10 yards on the play. If you see Morelli here, he's going to take the snap. He's going to start rolling. He looks up and he says, I'm in big trouble as he's being chased by two men is finally brought down as they lose 10 yards. But where the Bucks are hurting them is where they know CB East has to pass. And then uh, they're just coming after it. Chris Fassbender and Ryan Moore in on the tackle as Mike Schwab will punt. Gets off a pretty good punt. It's going to bounce at about the five and go into the end zone. Smile. So CB Smart will let the ball bounce into the end zone and the Bucks will take over at their own 20. So opportunities for both teams. The defense has come up big on both occasions. And uh, 
There's still no score. This is a typical East-West game, a low-scoring affair. Been Just a reminder that the, uh, this event is made possible by the Suburban Sports Business team. It's their advertising that allows you to watch local sports on TV. Here's some of the, uh, the businesses that are bringing the 1990 fall sports season. Sound Device, Cross Keys Cafe, Half Hour Collision, and the Connie Inn as a handoff quickly goes underneath. Getting very little yardage on the play on first down. Is Chris Cleveland. Now both defenses have really set the tempo of this game and I think it's going to take probably a turnover or a big play offensively. Maybe one of these teams come out firing a little bit on first down, maybe go for a, for a big one there. Second down, uh, nine to go. Fitz Martin split wide to the left. Going back to pass and hitting Sonsini with a pass at around the 23, gets to the 25 and around the 26 yard line. Matt Sonsini, a nice catch of a tough ball to catch. Control it, brought it down, knew where he was on the field, got about five to call third and three. Some other uh, businesses bringing you the game today. And glad that we can have them with us at Pipersville in. Jim Jewelers, Jiffy Car Wash, and the New Britain Inn. Oh, fuck. Third down, now Cleveland splits out wide and in the slot is Sonsini back to pass and under a rush and down he goes. Marlin goes down under the rush of Ed West and West has been all over the backfield for them. Well, both defenses, we mentioned what the Bucks do when the Patriots have to pass. And the Patriots say turnabout is fair play as West blitzes in from his linebacking slot. We'll show it right here. Moreland does not stand a chance. West comes all alone. Nobody touches him. Drops him back at the 19-yard line for a loss of nine and another punt. Zerby and Lenz deep, waiting for uh, Chris Warren's kick. Warren standing in his own six. Good snap, he gets it away. It's a low line drive, but they'll let bounce at the 45 and it takes an east bounce and it goes back to about the 42 and east will set up in very good field position. Just a quick reminder, the Suburban Sports Network reminds viewers to listen to WVUX 1570 AM for the following sports radio broadcast. On Saturday, November the 24th, it's the annual rivalry of the Lions and the Panthers, Penn State and Pitt University of Pittsburgh at Beaver Stadium in State College, BA. Be sure to listen for that at 12.30 p.m. And be sure to listen to WBUX 15.70 on the AM dial, serving Bucks in Eastern Montgomery counties for over 40 years. First down for the Patriots. Handoff goes underneath and getting some good yardage. Dortone. Rick Dortone. Dortone took it over the 40 to about the 37 yard line. Call it a gain of about seven. It'll make it second and, and Gain of eight, actually, you'll make it a game, uh, second and two as he actually, the ball spotted at the 35 yard line. Nice run by Dortone. Those quick misdirection plays make it easier for the offensive line. They don't have to hold their blocks as long. Second and two. Again, Dortone, the team has slipped down and helping him finish it off is Mike Bell on the tackle. He gets him at around the 35, maybe a 34 yard line. Gain of very little, if any, will still call it third and two. Well, as you said, right, I would say that the Patriots here are in four down territory. We have timeout, I think. It's an official timeout. Okay. Again, an equipment repair. And with 526 to go in the first half, no score. Both teams have had some opportunities, but the defense has come up very big. I'll tell you, a play that might work would be if the Patriots fake that quick running play and maybe set someone out on a long pass, they might be able to get it all here. They're all in tight here as it's third and short. And the handoff goes, is that Lenz, I believe, and he's not gonna get it. Whoever it was, I believe that was Sean Lenz on the carry. One of the problems, Bob, with running out of the I formation to the deep man, when like the Bucks were playing almost a goal line type defense, it's very tough because the defense is able to get penetration quickly 
and Lenz had nowhere to go. As soon as he hit the line, there was no hole there, and we have the Patriots are going to take time out here with a fourth and two. And while we have that time out, let's do some business of our own. We'll be right back. In today's economy, remodeling is a way to add a fresh look to your home without spending a fortune. The professionals at John M. Toth Plumbing and Heating specialize in design and installation of kitchens and bathrooms. If it's a new heating or air conditioning system that you need, call on John M. Toth for installation, preventative maintenance contracts, and 24-hour emergency service. From a drippy faucet to complete kitchen remodeling, Toth Plumbing and Heating is committed to professionalism, integrity, and customer service. Conti's Cross Keys Inn, a landmark restaurant in the heart of Bucks County, is celebrating 45 years of a family tradition in dining excellence. Come reacquaint yourself with the finest of fresh foods and impeccable service. For reservations, dial 348-9600. The Pipersville Inn, located off Route 611 at Route 413, is Conti's conveniently country restaurant. Come enjoy the open-air kitchen and watch your chefs prepare the best in steaks, chops, and fresh seafood. Open Tuesday through Sunday for lunch and dinner. Frankenfield Buick Pontiac is proud to again be a sponsor on the Suburban Sports Network. They're even more proud about serving Bucks County for over 55 years with excellent sales, service, and leasing. Frankenfield Buick Pontiac, where our salesmen sell service and our servicemen sell cars. Back to the action on fourth down. Well, it's incomplete, but I think we may have some kind of a call. The belt's going to know it's a hold or whatever. The flag went from the back judge. It is going to be a hold against Easton, I'm sure, Bob, that they will decline the penalty. No question about that. Uh, a good call, I think, by Coach Green. I think that they realized there was no way they probably were going to be able to run the ball for the two yards. And now the Bucks will take over at their own. 35. So this game has really been played in fits and starts. The defense has dominated for both teams. They have indeed. The defense has come up big on account of the case. There hasn't been any really huge penalty so far. I guess the longest running play has been about eight, nine yards. First and ten. So Tini goes in motion. And the handoff goes underneath the Dave Binder. Binder gets outside a little bit, gets about six. You can hear the Bucks sideline there are a little unhappy. They thought maybe a little bit of a late hit by Kurt Hahn, but the official said, uh-uh. Give Binder, you know, about six on the play. Make it a second and six, let's uh, second and four. Let's take a look at just, it again, Bob. Just strictly off his right side, follows his block. And you see Hahn came in there. There's Dave Binder, a junior, good size for a running back. Second and four, again, Sonsini in motion, Binder single setback and rolling left to pass. Is Mullen under a rush, he avoids the first rush, but he's, oh, and he breaks free, knocks into his own man. Nice job, though, by Greg Boylan. I thought he was both. He should have been, and you can be sure that Kurt Hahn, the man we just talked about, is, very unhappy with himself. He had Moreland wrapped up on the play for a substantial loss. And Moreland, as it turns out, Bob, picks up two very hard-earned yards on the play when he should have lost about five or six. Let's take a look at it again, Bob. Like, here goes Moreland back. He wants to throw it right there, but no one's open. Hahn has him. He shakes him off, cuts back, still going before he's finally brought down, but a great individual effort by Greg Moreland. Gain of two, it'll make a third and two handoff underneath. Goes to Binder and he spins for the first down. Nice play by Dave Binder. Tom Grotar, are you on the field there? I'm here. Okay, Tom, uh, what's the atmosphere like? You're on the Bucks side. Uh, are they uh, still pumped up or are they just getting down to the I think, to be honest with you, there's like a feeling of anticipation right now because they finally have a good drive going. They seem to be getting a little bit more vocal than they have been in the past uh, couple of series. We'll have to wait and see if they can get in. Okay, thanks a lot, Tom. He's so lucky he gets to get on camera all the time. What a guy. Because he's the best looking of the three of us. I represent that. Certainly do. First down, a handoff again. Oh, no, a fake handoff. And Moylan keeps it himself. He takes it over midfield. Nice little bit of uh, chicanery by Moylan. Who's going to buy his stomach. 
took it back out and drew the defense on Binder and then uh, carried it himself. And I think that's a factor where Binder has been so successful in carrying the ball lately that I think they're all looking for him to take. Well, they're doing some different things offensively here. The two teams have sort of tried to butt heads with each other up the middle and just have not been able to do much. And, you know, I think they have to spread things out and we have a timeout being called here, I think, by the Bucks. I'm not sure. I was Patriots. Patriots. Okay. That's their second of the half with 2.18 to go. But, Bob, I, I think that both sides have all of a sudden realized there's just no way that they're going to be able to overpower the other side. So we have to maybe use a little bit more finesse here instead of the old, they call it smash mouth football. Well, these teams have seen each other so long. This is the game they aim for all year long. This is the game. This makes the season, it breaks the season. Uh, again, the Patriots come in seven, two and one. Bucks come in at nine and one. But again, to, to be uh, cliche about it, I guess, you throw the records out the window at this point because both teams know the other plays so well that that little counterplay that was some senior usually or Cleveland runs so well. They, they've tried it uh, a couple times and they haven't been able to make uh, have any success with it. And uh, it's just been tough. A couple more people want to thank uh, for sponsoring the Sneaker Place, Lahaska Travel, Outpour and Speed Tours, Dry Sink, etc., Bucks County Community College, and the Grease Monkey. And now, Sonsini goes back into the eye and a pitch back to Sonsini. Jiggles away from one, but can't get away from the rest of them. And he's going to lose about a half a yard. Well, what's happening defensively, Bob, with the Patriots is they're getting great penetration from their linebackers. And those deep kind of plays are not working. The success they've had, the Bucks running, have been just on simple, quick handoff type plays not allowing those linebackers the penetration that they had been getting. They get a third down and four. Passing formation, Sonsini in the slot and back to pass. Goes Moylan, he's got time and he's got Sonsini. Inside the 40 to the 37 yard line and then we'll give the Bucks a fresh four. So Matt Sonsini, Found the seam in the zone, got the first down. For Bucks will have a fresh four, as I mentioned, with 1.23 to go in the first half. The clock is running. Some other people are uh, pleased to sponsor us. Uh, Amber in for males, tuxedos, and Zaluki painting. First and 10, ball resting now at the 37 yard line. Back to pass again. And almost intercepted, breaking well on the ball with Sean Nunes intended for Fitz Martin, but ball falls incomplete. Well, the, the Bucks are going to have to start going a little bit deeper with some of their passes with the minute six to go and 37 yards. There's Coach Petten. They're, what they're trying to do now is roll Moreland out to one side, maybe have him go with that short pass, but I, I think they might find the middle more wide open here, Bob, than possibly the sideline. Uh, second down. And 10, single step back as they show a passing formation. Fitz Martin split wide in the slot as Santini back to pass. Screen. Trying to set the screen up and East read it beautifully. Cleveland gets a little bit of yards. We have a flag down. Boy, you can see the East defensive line goes stop cold when they saw it. What do we have here, Bob? We have a second flag along the sideline. I'm not sure against who Lenz was in there and looked like one of the Bucks assistant coaches. So we're going to have a couple of flags as Lenz is still talking over there. He can get away from that sideline and just go and play. But I think we have multiple fouls, as they call it. The old multiple foul. We have a clip against West. And we have a dead ball foul and a personal foul against East. So they'll walk off the 10, and then I think they'll walk the 15 back, I believe. Well, well, no, the clip is also from the spot, and it's 15, so it'll go from the 40. It looks like the clip may be about the 42, which would take it all the way back. Actually, they're going to go 15-1 and 15 the other, come back 
to, to the 42. Okay, let's get it. Tom Grossard down on the field. Yeah, I was just standing by where the uh, uh, play just happened there, and some of the Central Bucks West coaches were complaining. It's getting pretty exciting. Uh, right there, uh, Coach Patton was very excited. He tried to uh, grab the quarterback, Moylan, and say, get a timeout, get a timeout. Finally, Moylan looked over, and he and Santino were able to get the timeout. But uh, a tense moment for the coaching staff trying to stop the clock. Tom, what do you think they're going to try here? What, who do you think they're going to go for? Well, you know me. I like to put the ball in the air. I think that's what they have to do with the amount of time left, only 38 seconds. And uh, for the first time this, this game, uh, Moylan's been able to get some time to throw, so I guess now's the most appropriate time to do that. Well, uh, thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. I like Bob. I'll tell you the truth. I, you know, Sonsini's dangerous, but I, the well, man I throw the ball to is Fitzmartin. Okay, Sonsini is split wide to the left side. That's true. If Fitzmartin is in at the uh, tight end left end, and but it's a handoff underneath to Cleveland. Ah, uh -uh, no way. And they're going to have to call timeout again unless the 30 Seven. seconds to go. They're going to run a quick play. They tried to do a little bit of deception. It didn't work. East was ready for it. Now back to pass as they called two in a row. It's Moreland. He completes it to Cleveland at the 15-yard line. He's knocked out of bounds there on the play by Ed West coming in from his linebacker spot and with some help from Sean Lenz. So the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go. Give him a chance to one more play, I think. If they, even if they get the first down, they'll probably, or oh, maybe not. If it takes a short period of time, they may call a timeout and go for one pop at the end zone, or they may go for the end zone right I go here. for the end zone here. Now, Sonsini is in the slot. It's Martin wide left, and they're on a blitz. On the ball, though. Oh, who's got, yes, it's going to be East. He's had the ball. Oh, Marlon as they blitzed him. Marlon uh, gave up the ball, and who was that? Hahn, Kurt Hahn, 44. Well, you had a figure. It was money in the bag for points on the board with Perinian's throw there. But no way as they blitz through. Moylan fumbles the ball, and Kurt Hahn falls on it. And again, East has dodged the bullet with seven and the six. The time's going to run out in the half. We have come to the end of an exciting first half. A half that has, that has seen no scoring on the board, but some great excitement. And we're going to go, if we can, to uh, Tom Grotar eventually. But, Bob, I'll tell you, an exciting first half is as exciting a first half as you're going to get. And we got to think that uh, the breaks, if any, oh, they've been evenly distributed. But Carmel, big defensive plays, a tremendous defensive effort. Well, the one thing that we've mentioned throughout the half is when... One team knows the other team has to pass. They're really coming heavy on the rush with the blitzes and everything. Made it very difficult. I think these teams, if they're going to pass the ball successfully at all in the second half, are going to have to do it on the first downs and the second downs early because when it comes third and long, those linebackers especially are just coming in and blitzing like crazy. And I think that is uh, what's causing a problem with the... Uh, yeah, that's true. Okay. And we have come to the end of the first half with the score. Zero, zero, just we started and we'll be right back. If your car has left you feeling stranded, then call Rolling Automotive Garage Service today. They'll repair, service, or do a safety check on your vehicle at your home or business. Call today for an appointment at 766-8033. For male tuxedos, the right tux for any occasion, we have it. The dinner jacket to be seen in this fall is the classic white dinner jacket by After Six. Pictured here, this handsome jacket is a perfect blend of style and comfort. This distinctive jacket is correct for any celebration, day or evening, and is available along with many other fine styles and names at Four Males Tuxedos. Hope to see you soon for that special occasion at Four Males Tuxedos, one mile west of Cross Keys on Route 313. Conveniently located one mile west of the 611 Bypass, the Fountainville Deli is famous for its breakfast and lunch menu. Everything from its coffee, donuts, and breakfast sandwiches through its lunchtime lineup of steaks, hoagies, and soups. Open Monday to Friday, 6 to 5, and Saturday, 7 to 3. Choosing the right college is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. The right choice may be closer than you think. Consider Delaware Valley College. DelVal offers Bachelor of Science degree programs in Agriculture, Science, Computers, and Business Administration. 
Small class size and a practical, hands-on education make DelVal students in demand. You'll find many activities and friends on the beautiful DelVal campus. And best of all, it's close to home. For more information and a free brochure, call 345-1500. Tis the season to plan that special gathering at Widow Brown's Plumsteadville Inn, noted for its outstanding cuisine. Make your event an occasion to remember at Widow Brown's. For reservations, call 766-7500. Happy Thanksgiving from all of us here at Suburban Community Television. And we're back at War Memorial Field in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, where at halftime we are the same way we started, no score. You heard from some of the fine people who bring us the uh, game. A couple more people want to talk about Delcrest Medical, Frankenfield Buick, Warrington Motor Lodge, or Fowley's Crab House, and John Toad Plumbing. I'm Bob Friedman along with Bob Lang, and coming up off the field is Tom Drotar. He has a third microphone. Hopefully we'll be able to hear from him too as he's in the booth with us right now. Tom, can you be heard right now? No, I guess you can't, but we'll try and get that mic up. Oh, okay, so we'll just sit here and we'll let Tom, you can watch us talk a little bit at halftime. Bob Lang, can you be heard? Uh, hopefully, yes. Well, this game has been dominated by the defenses in the first half. First time... The Patriots get the ball, they get one first down, but they fumble the ball. West first break starts at the East 20, unable to move the ball. An offside penalty hurts them. The field goal attempt is wide. Then the two teams just sort of slog it out. East gets the next break on a fumbled punt by Sonsini. They're unable to take advantage of it. And finally, late in the half, West with a really nice drive. They get the ball inside the 20 yard line down to the 15. But then again, and Moreland is sacked, he fumbles, Hahn recovers. I have a feeling the defenses may turn out to be the offenses in the second half. It may be one of the defenses might possibly really get great field position or take it in themselves and score because neither offense has been able to do much. Well, both teams have self-destructed deep in territory. There's been penalties on West, there's been fumbles by West. There have been the same thing with, with East. They've, they've had some penalties and some great defense, as we mentioned. It's been an interesting, uh, been an interesting first half uh, for uh, for the two teams. And uh, right now, what we're going to do is we're going to bring Tom Grotar in. He's taking the headset over. Tom, how about your observations of the first? Well, half? I, I think Central Bucks West uh, is getting on the right track. And that last drive was really impressive, despite the fact that they fumbled. They were able to move all the way down the field, mixing up passing and running. And uh, like. Uh, Boylan said when I talked to him, he said he thinks they can pass them. When, I've noticed when he just dropped back, they have had guys open. The person just too much for the guy to can't get the ball off. But I, I think City West has the edge, even though the score is 0-0. Zero zero. Thanks, Tom. As a picture again of CD East entertains us at halftime. It's been an interesting first half in that respect. The passing game, except for a couple of passes, has not really been affected because such pressure from both of uh, both yeah. defense. And I think one of the reasons, well, probably the main reason that it's caused is because neither team has been able to get into a like a third and two, third and three that often. So it's been like third, seven, third and eight, and they know they're going to pass, so they blitz and there go the quarterback. Tom, I was a little surprised on the, that uh, play. That, uh, in fact, I was talking to Walt McConnish while we had the break uh, just before the fumble. I was a little surprised. You had a field blitz coming. You want, I would have thought possibly they would have tried a little handoff underneath try and get the yardage. I believe they had a timeout left and try to go with Peranian and get the three because in this kind of a game, three points is going to make a lot of difference. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, you know, what can you say, really? I was surprised that, that after, uh, what was it, with 38 seconds right away when you asked me what I thought was going to happen, you said they thought you thought they would pass. I said I thought they'd pass. They ran the ball. Well, sometimes CB West is difficult to predict, and that's why they're successful, right? That's exactly it. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. So we have come to the end of the first 24 minutes of play, uh, uh, 24 minutes you've seen a lot of action, a lot of excitement, some uh, turnovers, and uh, Bob Lang, what can we look for in the second half? Well, it'll be interesting to see what sort of offensive adjustments each team makes. As Tom mentioned, when the teams were in the third and you know they have to pass situation, the linebackers dominated with the blitzes, forcing sacks and turnovers. Whichever team is 
better able to get the passing game going. And as I said early, in earlier downs, I think it's that's what's going to be a key. Defensively, I think somebody is going to make a big play defensively, which is going to lead to a score. I think that could be the case, too. It should be an interesting second half. And some of the other people who are bringing this, this game today, Doylestown Hospital, Wake Management Center, Delaware Valley College, Rolling Automotive Garage Service, Cheese State Charlie's, Clearwater Pools, Mountain Lake Tidia, and Pool and Petty, and the Fountain Bill Deli. And Bob Lang, Tom Drotar, and I, I'm Bob Friedman. We'll be back to bring you all the second half action. Don't go away. We're only halfway done, and we got an exciting one here. It's scoreless at the end of the half. We'll do some business, and we'll be back for the second half. Zaluki Painting, a dependable and honest painting company serving the Bucksmont area. Book now for early spring and receive a free power washing for the exterior of your home. Call Zaluki Painting for your free estimate at your convenience. Mountain Lake welcomes you to its Christmas and gourmet shop. Our sales staff is eager to assist you with all your holiday preparations. From decorating your house to choosing a unique gift such as a custom made gourmet basket, which is sure to be a hit with anyone. Mountain Lake is an authorized dealer of Department 56 Dickens Houses, Snow Babies, and Steinbach Nutcrackers. As you look around the store, you'll be pleased to see a large assortment of imported tree decorations, nativities, music boxes, and gift wrapping supplies. Our list, like Santa's, goes on and on. Stop in and catch our spirit. Repco has been the name to trust for all your car and car part needs since 1976. Open Monday through Friday 9 to 5.30 and Saturdays 9 to 2 for your convenience. If we don't stock your part, we'll have it within two days. Repco, the name to trust for your car and car. Country Classics Furniture, fine 18th and 19th century country reproductions made in Bucks County by cabinet maker William Draper. Piper Classics, through its 611 Piper's Bill, is proud to carry a vast inventory that includes Country Classic Furniture. Piper Classics is one of the largest country stores in Bucks County, featuring quality country furniture and accessories. Country Classics Furniture in both pine and cherry woods is a collector's dream. Designs that combine authenticity, detail, practicality, and charm. Piper Classics has Country Classic Furniture, and Piper Classics has quality crafts, stencils, and paints, country lighting, and more for that little spot above the fireplace or for a whole house to the entire line of country classics furniture and a potpourri of handcrafted gifts and accessories at Piper Classics, just six and a half miles north of Doylestown and Route 611 Pipersville, one mile south of 611 and 413. Open Monday through Saturday, country furniture and decorative items at their very best, Piper Classics, Route 611 Pipersville. <laughs> Serving portions of Bucks and Huntington County with quality local programming, this is Suburban Community Television. The 1990 Suburban Sports Network Fall Sports Season is also brought to you by Delcrest Medical, Frankenfield Buick, Warrington Motor Lodge, O'Fally's Crab House, John Toth Plumbing, the Medical Weight Management Center, Delaware Valley College, Rolling Automotive Garage Service, G Steak Charlie's, Clearwater Pools, Mountain Lake Pool and Patio, Fountainville Deli. Peruzzi Toyota, Repco Import Parts, Keenan Motors, and by The Optical Company. Memorial Field in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, the annual Thanksgiving Day Classic between Central Bucks West and Central Bucks East, a scoreless tie at halftime. I'm, I'm Bob Friedman, along with Bob Lang in the booth with me, and down on the field is Tom Grotar. Bob Lang, 
again, as we mentioned before, halftime, a defensive struggle all the way through. Teams have moved the ball, but just have not been able to dent the end zone. We had a field goal attempt that just went wide by West, and at the end of the first half, it looked like they wanted to drive for a score, but didn't get it. Turnovers, two turnovers for West, one for East. And thus far, neither team's been able to do much. What'll be interesting, Bob, will be the, again, the first drive here in the third quarter. West will get the kickoff, and we'll see what adjustments each coach has made at halftime. As we said, the teams have had trouble when they've had to pass the football. The defenses know that and have come after the quarterback. Down on the field is Tom Drotar, and Tom was talking, looked like he was talking to some of the Bucks people. Were you talking to some people at halftime there? Yeah, I talked to the uh, CB West statistician, Fred Schoed, who's been here for years, and I asked him what exactly would happen in the locker room, and he said that uh, Coach Putton just stressed that just keep doing the things they're going to do. They're not going to change. They're going to keep running the, the typical Central Bucks West plays. A lot of running, a little bit of passing. One thing he did stress, though, was they got to hold on to the ball to win this game. Guys? Thanks a lot, Tom. Appreciate it. And again, uh, that is a, that is a truism. If there was, they have to hold on to the ball. Uh, that big fumble at the end of the half cut short what appeared to be a scoring drive for sure, Bob Lang. And well, we just have to hold on to it. And again, as Tom mentioned earlier in the game, uh, they deferred the, the decision to the second half, and that's a little bit of Joe Paterno and Mike Patton. Paterno always likes to defer that decision as well. Well, and I think, too, uh, a lot of coaches also like to get their defense maybe on the field first to start a game, maybe to to get that turnover, make some big plays, and try and set the tone. And in actuality, the West defense did. They forced the fumble the first time. Unfortunately, they were unable to convert. And now the East defense played extremely well in the first half. Both defenses did. And I think we may start, we may get into a little field position type situation with the games in the second half with the, with the two teams. And the interesting to see, remember East came out with the no huddle offense, tried that, and that seemed to work, but they gave that up fairly quickly. So let's see what changes they may have. It's, we're about ready here for the kickoff. And this kickoff is brought to you by Bucks County Community College, offering quality, affordable, educational opportunities for all ages. Bucks has a program designed for your needs. Call them today. Bucks County Community College, what education is meant to be. Sonsini Fields, the other second half kickoff at his own 10 yard line, but takes it out over the 25 to about the 27 yard line. As Sonsini, Chris Fassbender, and uh, Chris uh, Cleveland were deep, but it was Sonsini went over the left side, got the ball, and takes it out for about a 17 yard advance on the kickoff return. And that's where the Bucks have set up shop at the 28-yard line, we'll call it. Just opening the second half. If you're just joining us, no score. A lot of action, but no scoring. Sonsini comes off the field. And the handoff goes off to Dave Binder, who picks it out over 30 to about the 32-yard line. Gain of about five on the play. will bring up a second and five. Besides the turnovers the first half, Bob, penalties also hurt the Bucks pretty badly. Well, they had that one big hold, holding call that took them out, followed by the sack. Took them all the way from their 20 to the 46-yard line. Well, they had that procedure on the first drive after the fumble. That's true. The handoff again goes underneath the binder, and binder breaks it up, and he breaks it past the first down straight. Great driving run by Dave Binder. Binder took that handoff, drove by some decent blocking, but out that was all power running by Binder, as he would not be brought down until he got to the 40-yard line. It's a first down for West. Let's start real quickly down on the field. We have Tom Drotar. Tom, what's happening? I just wanted to tell you that I remember at the top of the show, one of you mentioned that CBEs might pull out all the stops because it's the end of the year. On the kickoff, I heard Mike Petton say that watch the fake, watch the onside kick, watch the onside kick. So I think they're expecting that same type, type of game. Guys? Thank you, Tom. As we saw Chris Cleland take a sweep to the right, but he was swept down by a host of East tacklers for a loss of about two to the 38-yard line. And these defenses are pumped, Bob. Yes, indeed. 
Now they're again facing a passing situation. As you see the replay, again, the, the linebackers have been outstanding. As you see Ed West, one of the ones, he and Han have really been in the backfield a lot this afternoon. Second down and we'll call it 12. Again, Sonsini goes into motion and back to pass on a quick pass to Sonsini, who breaks one tackle but can't break another one at the 42 yard line. Gain about four on that, it'll make it second down and eight, uh, third down and eight to go. I think at the end of the game, we might want to take a look at some of what we consider the offensive and defensive players of the game. Right now, Ed West has got to be in heavy consideration for the defensive player. Along with Han, because you remember Han also recovered that fumble for East of Moreland's right at the end of the half. That is true. Of course, we have some good defensive players on the West team as well. Passing situation, third and eight. Split wide is Ryan Moore. Back to pass, quick looking pass to Cleveland. He's got the first down, a great pass. Good play over the 50, just a simple stand up looking play. Great play as that gained 14 yards, 13 yards. They only needed eight, but those are the tight passes I think that are gonna have to be thrown. Cause I don't think Moreland's gonna have the time and to me, that's the toughest pass to throw, that quick look in, because if you throw it too hard, your receiver is not ready for it. If you throw it too soft, it's very interceptable. But a first down at the 46-yard line for the Bucs in Patriot territory. The handoff to Sonsini. He's not going to get to the line of scrimmage or barely get back to it. As stringing out well was Tony Costello and Sean Lenz. No game, we'll call it it's second and ten. Again, I don't think those type plays that take time to develop are going to work against the Patriots. Their defense is doing a great job of penetration. As you said, the linebackers, West and Hahn especially, seem to be getting in the backfield quickly. And those type running plays just have not, and I don't think will work. Second down along ten. Moylan still on the quarterback. They're showing blitz now. And Sonsini goes in motion, and it's a fake. And Marlon's going to take it himself. He breaks it over the 45-yard line to about the 43. Looked like he might have a little bit more room, but it closed up quickly on him. These are teams, Bob. Both teams are very similar in defense. And the fact that you seem to get some success if you do the quick handoffs to them. Running wide and delay plays don't seem to work well against these defenses because they react so well. Well, that time it looked like an inside blitz. Marlon saw it and rolled to his left and then turned it up the field and picked up four yards on the play. Okay, third down and about six right now. The passing look, puts Martin wide left. Under a rush and he throws, he's got a man. Oh, it's puts Martin who came back for it, couldn't hold on, he'll bring a fourth down up. Well, there again, Ed West. That time, Bob, he had time, Moreland did. Initially, good coverage by the secondary, forcing Moreland to roll a little bit, and then West came in and pressured him, and he had to throw it a little quickly. But definitely a catchable ball by Roman Fitzmartin. Chris Warren will stand back at his own 44-yard line. Back deep, Dave Zerbe and Sean Lenz at around their own 10. Snaps a good one, like punts a high wobbler. Fair catch signal by Zerby, and he makes it down at his own 17-yard line. A reminder, while he had this time, the VHS copies of this event and all other suburban sports events are available through Suburban Cable TV. Call 345-5154 Monday through Friday between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. And you're watching the community at the, the Suburban Sports Network brought to you on the community television channels the Suburban Cable TV and Adelphia Cable Communications and Peruzzi Toyota, Repco Imported Auto Parts, Keenan Motors, and the Optical Company. Just some of the people helping bring this game. As on first down, handoff goes underneath to, I believe, is that Titus? Yeah, that's Titus on the carry. And he'll get about five. It'll make up the second and five. Well, Bob, the Bucks got the ball, saw the second half, ran almost five minutes off the clock, but got nothing for it. Yeah, they did, and again, the defense came up big for East uh, when they had to. 
Second and five, handoff underneath the lens. Lens breaks it outside, gets the first down, and takes it up to about the 30, where he's smothered there, but good. Running by Lens, he just picked his spots and got to the first down. Mike Bell on the tackle. Let's take a quick break while we have a timeout. We'll be right back. Barb Lynn Carpet solves carpet shopping problem number five. Finding the right color at the right price. And match grandmother's eyes. And look over my bowling ball. And blend well with Fuji. Well, that's a little too expensive. Maybe something a little more plush. It's just the right shade. Ah, uh, that's a great price. And Fuji likes it too. Barb Lynn Carpets. A color you die for at a price you can live with. What do I do that you don't? Well, I take my car for more than an oil change. I get a full-service car care package. I get my tires checked, my interior vacuumed, and my windows washed. I also get my car's fluids filled, like my battery and my brake fluid. I even get my windshield washer filled. I don't make an appointment, and I get fast professional service. What do I do that you don't? I take my car to Grease Monkey. Discover the difference that care makes at your neighborhood Grease Monkey. Ten Talons Country Store in Buckingham Green features Bucks County's largest selection of Capel and Mill River flat braided rugs at the lowest prices. Custom sewing is available, plus a large selection of fabrics and gift items at Ten Talons Country Store in Buckingham Green. Back to live action, Bob Friedman along with Bob Lang on first down pitch to Sean Lenz. Gets about two yards. Ball will move up to about the 32, 33 yard line. Well, that time, maybe surprisingly, uh, C.B. West took a timeout. Something evidently defensively that one of the coaches noticed they wanted to discuss. Well, whatever it was, they, they, they've taken the timeout, and we have 6.19 to go in the th third quarter. A still no scoreless game between Central Bucks East and Central Bucks West. Man in motion left, and the handoff underneath to Dortone, I believe that was, and he got some big yardage there. About eight yards on the carry. Make it a third and short, about third and one. As a good crack off the right side of the line. Gave Dortone some quick running. And that's what I'm talking about. Those quick pop plays seem to work against these two offenses. Exactly. As you saw on first down, the sweep did not work. That time they put Dortone, Dortone got seven yards on it. He put facing third and one down. Third down and a long one to go. Hand off underneath and tripping his foot and line appeared to be Brian Titus. I think he's going to be stopped short of the first down by about a half a yard. Let's take a quick uh, trip down the field to Tom Drotar. During the uh, timeout, Central Bucks West Coast, Mike Fenton said to the defense that if Central Bucks East goes to an unbalanced line, not to shift, if you notice a lot of times they'll shift down the formation, if CB East is in an unbalanced line, either way, they won't shift. We'll see what happens with that adjustment. Good information, Tom. Thanks a lot. As we have a fourth down, a very short punting team coming in. Schwab into punt. Single safety. I don't know if uh, Wes is buying it totally because only a single safety is Sonsini. Schwab does delay, but he gets it off. Sonsini will field it at his own 30. Breaks the tackle at the 35 on the 37 yard line. Nice job avoiding the initial contact, Bob. Yes, indeed. That was a low kick that Sonsini was able to pick up. Remember, uh, he fumbled a punt earlier in the first half, but he gets good return yardage, gets it out to about the 37. You know what I do here, Bob Lang? I would take my action and go deep right now. I agree. I might try and isolate Sonsini maybe on one side. Or Fitzmartin with single coverage. I like Fitzmartin. I, I really like him. He's got a great pair of hands. He's got good speed. We'll find out. Fake handoff, and they are going back to pass. He's looking deep for Fitzmartin. Who does? He can't make the ball to catch at the 28-yard line. Oh, they had it set up. Fitzmartin was wide open. The pass just a little long for him. Fitzmartin adjusted to the ball. Couldn't quite come down with it, and that was the play. Are the are the Bucks coaches stealing our uh, calls up here? Are they listening in to Tom down there, maybe? Uh, 
I don't know what it was. It just seemed to make sense there because the running plays, you show a running formation, which they did. Fitzmartin had the defender beaten. Had the pass been two yards shorter, we're looking at a big game. Pardon me, possibly six. On the handoff, Sonsini deep. He takes it out and breaks it over the 40-yard uh, line to about the 42. 43-yard line, a pretty fair gain around six yards. That will be third and four. I wonder if Santini can throw. Here's the replay. Again, Santini in motion. He just cuts it back inside. It is brought down. There you see Matt. Junior. That stutter step did it really did the job yeah. there. He did that little stutter step that just as he cut the cut in and forced the man by him, getting those six yards. So it's third and four. Backs are in the eye. Handoff goes to Chris Cleveland. He's not going to get the first down. He'll get to about the 45-yard line, make it fourth and three. And I believe the Bucks will have to punt again. Yes, indeed. Ed West, number 38, did not buy the play and Cleveland will get a couple but it's going to bring him up short and yeah I'd say right now Bob the defensive start certainly for the Patriots has been Ed West absolutely he's been all over the field making the play hey Sean Lenz has looked real good on defense as well as far as the offense is concerned there really hasn't been a star yet because the teams really just haven't I guess if you had to say anybody it might be Sonsini but uh Really nothing to speak of with a nothing-nothing tie and 2.48 to go in the third quarter. Kick by Warren. Loops through it. It's picked up by Zerbe. who carries it out over his own 32-yard uh, 30 line where the Patriots will set up business. That was, that was a real gamble by Zerbe because uh, he could have very easily have lost that ball. I mean, he tried to pick it up on the run. Yes, he did. Reminder again, some of the other people who were uh, bring, helping bring the aid to these games. Austin's Hallmark, Eagles at Peak Springwater, Little Browns, Joe's Pizza, and American Reynolds. First and ten for the Patriots. Pump fake, and he's going to go for Lenz deep. Lenz makes it. He's going to go in for the score. Sean Lenz with a catch, and he's going to go 68 yards into the end zone for a touchdown. And CBE draws first blood with 2.16 to go in the first quarter on a little hitch and go play, Bob. And actually, that was not bad coverage by the defense, but Lenz used his height. He was 6 1, and he beat the defender, and Morelli really laid the ball up there nicely for him. And we have our first big play of the game 70 yard touchdown. And there is stunned silence on the Buck Rooters' side. It is dead silent, and there is pandemonium across the field as the Patriots fans just. Again, just as the, as the Bucks did, the Patriots ran a long pass for in the first play, and it worked. The kick by Schwab is up, and the kick is good. And with 2.16 to go in the third quarter, we have our first quarter of the game as Central Bucks East has taken a 7 to nothing lead. Well, we talked about at halftime that they were going to have to throw more on first and second down. Good pump fake by Morelli. Lenz had the defender beaten just by about half a step. As he said, he, he used his range and his height just to outreach him. And once he caught the ball, defender dove trying to stop it. Okay. Okay, let's go on the sideline. Tom Drotar, what do you got? I just wanted to tell you that uh, Sean Lenz, the guy that just scored the touchdown, is one of the guys that's been getting in there a little late, doing a lot of jawing, and actually got into a confrontation with the coaches. But one of the reasons C.B. West Bench is so quiet right now is that is an especially painful touchdown scored by the guy that they would least like to have it scored by. Guys? Okay, Tom, what's it like on the bench right now? Were you standing there as they scored? Yeah, yeah, I was standing there. They were a little bit surprised because actually the uh, lens was well covered, but uh, he made a really good play and went up over the, uh, the defensive back and caught the ball. Got to give credit where credit is due. Okay, thank you, Tom. So, 7-0. Triple safeties, uh, triple deep at Cleveland again, and in the middle is Sonsini. Up is uh, Chris Fassbender awaiting Mike Schwab's kick. 
kicks a nice high deep kick. It's going to go down to Fast Bender with a two, and he gets it back to Sonsini. He takes it over the 10 yard line, and he's buried there. I mean, buried there by Hans. Uh, well, the momentum has definitely shifted. And I think you're right, Bob, that touchdown really shocked the Bucks. I think uh, it's got them a little bit back on their heels, but Kurt Hahn, oh, what a tackle on Sonsini. As the, as the Bucks tried a little uh, fanciness there, but it really didn't work very well, and they're really in trouble now. They're back inside their own 15 down about the 13. They're at the 13 yard line, and they got to be careful here. They can't really open up at this point. Well, they can, but it's a dangerous play. Handoff underneath goes to Cleveland. Cleveland will get just to the 15-yard line as an excited uh, Patriot defense wraps him up right there. Make it second and about nine. A minute and a half to go in the third quarter as East has just taken a 7-0 lead on a 68-yard pass and run from Mike Morelli to Sean Lenz. And the sun is coming out brilliantly right now. Second and nine, ball just resting shy of the 15-yard line. Single step back is binder, binder gets the handoff, and he's not going to get much, if anything at all. Back to the line of scrimmage, maybe another yard beyond that. We'll call it third and eight. Bob, we, that defense is really pumping up yeah, now. Yeah, we do. We have a man down for the Patriots, number 88, Tony Costello, is down on the field. Yeah, the, the defense is just right now. That touchdown pumped them up, as you see. While we have Costello being intended to, let's take a break to some important business, and we'll be right back after these messages. Alston's Hallmark is proud to sponsor this East-West Thanksgiving Classic. This is our seventh holiday season in the Doylestown Shopping Center, and we are looking forward to meeting you and your family soon. We offer to you the largest selection of cards, gift wrap, party goods, and a full line of commercial office supplies. For your convenience, we are open over the holidays, Monday through Saturday, 10 till 9, and Sundays, 12 to 5. Having trouble with a stocking stuffer idea? How about the 1990 Hallmark Christmas tape or CD featuring Julie Andrews? Best wishes for a safe and happy holiday from Austin's Hallmark. Before or after the game, drop by Mike Carey's New Britain Inn for the area's best hard shell crabs, fresh seafood, and sandwiches. The NBI's full menu is available for takeout. Open seven days a week, you're sure to see a friendly face of the NBI. We hope to see yours real soon. Attention, pool owners. Clearwater Pools is there for all your pool care needs. Openings and closings are just two of the services we offer, including coping and tower repairs, heater and filter installation, and pool sleep service. Clearwater Pools is proud to be a new sponsor of the Suburban Sports Network. Back to action on third down, a screen pass, Cleveland fell incomplete. Warren will have to punch from his own two. Back deep, Zerbian lens and almost blocked, and Warren has run into it, but the ball was partially blocked. I believe there was contact. That's the only reason I can see a flag not falling. I'm not sure they even touched him. I'm really not, Bob. I, I don't know if they touched him. The referee was right there. Standing right there. He, he, shook, his, he shook his head and said no. Now, the Patriots have the ball here on the 45 of the Bucks, and it's uh, maybe it, you could go to the jugular if you wanted to here, Bob. Maybe go go long again. I think they have the lead. I think they just soon run the clock down a little bit. You have 22 seconds to go in the half. You're going to have a change of possession after this. I think they'll let the clock run out in the third quarter. Hand off the binder. Binder breaks it to the outside. Now he tries to cut him, but fast bender won't let him go. And Chris Warren finally knocks him down at around a nice little gain actually of about four yards out of nothing clock will continue to run as we have come to the end of the third quarter a third quarter to see cbe's finally draw blood at the end of 36 minutes of play it's cbe's seven cb west nothing we'll be back to fourth quarter action real shortly stick around <laughs> Attention, all local businesses. 
This space is for rent. <laughs> Let suburban community television help you promote the unique services, products, and personnel of your business on primetime television with a six to ten minute program devoted exclusively to your enterprise. Your business spotlight will be seen in over 25,000 households throughout Bucks and Hunterton County on your choice of two cable channels. Interested? Call today and find out how incredibly inexpensive local television advertising can be. Call now at 345-5154 and put your business in the spotlight. Back to fourth quarter action. Bob Friedman along with Bob Lang and on the sideline, Tom Drotar. Handoff goes underneath to Sean Lentz, and he's not going to get any yardage. One quick thing, I keep doing this. I apologize. That was Brian Titus on the carry at the end of the third quarter. My partner, Bob Lang, pointed that out to me. My apologies to Brian. You are not Dave Binder. We realize that. And Dave, you're not Brian Titus. We know that. But you're voting for a number 33, and, well, I'm confused, Bob. <laughs> Let's take a quick trip down the sidelines and Tom Drotar. A few minutes ago, a player was escorted off the field uh, for an injury, number 88, Costello. And I went over and talked to him. And as we mentioned before, uh, a lot of CB West players were complaining about late hits. Costello complained about CB West having late hits. So it's going on at both sides of the ball. Guys? 35. Pass goes out wide. And Zerby, it'll be fourth down. And I believe we'll be in a punting situation here as the ball resting at the 41-yard line of West. But the Bucks with a fourth at, a, at around six to go. And the punting unit comes in with, uh, I believe, Schwab. Schwab, right? Yeah. Sonsini will go back in uh, single safety. But the Patriots have things really where they want them now. They're, they should be able to pin the Bucks down around, say, their own 20 yard line and make them go a long distance. There's a nice high, high spiral calling for the fair catch. Is Sonsini rolls and it goes. Ah, oh. oh, it's into the end zone. If the, if the Patriot players did not try to dive for the ball, it might have died at about the one yard line. It but when they when they dove for it, they went into the end zone and took the ball in with them. If they maybe going under control and just stopped the ball, but they still uh, they really almost put the Bucks in a deep hole, but. They're in a deep enough hole now as it is, down 7 nothing. I think the Bucks are going to have to maybe do what the Patriots did to them. Maybe go for a long long play on first down or whatever. Well, we'll find out. Ball now at the 20-yard line. Key formation behind. Boyle well, hands it off underneath to Chris Fassbender. He'll take it out to about the 24-yard line. Tom, you're standing right there at the 20. Are they popping pretty good? I guess they are. They pop Fortunately, his microphone's not. <laughs> they popped out. That's what happened. He got popped down there. Well, thanks for that report, Tom. Are they dropping live turkeys yet? I think we can hear you now, Tom. Yeah, they are hitting very hard, as a matter of fact. I'm <laughs> sorry about the microphone. I don't know what happened there. But uh, uh, one th thing I'm trying to look for is any late hits, because both sides have been complaining about it. I haven't really noticed that much. I think they're just hitting really hard and uh, taking that as dirty play. But we'll see what happens. Okay, Tom, is a quick uh, hitter. Gains about four and will make a third down and one ball at the 29-yard line. Everybody in tight on this third and very short play. Moylan hands it off. That's Fassbender. He's got the first down. He's knocked out of bounds at about the 34-yard line. And I'll tell you, they have 9.50 to go in this ball game. The Bucks have plenty of time to move. I think what they want to do is move it at their own speed. As we see a Buck fan who's obviously paying for the occasion. A couple of them. Looks like you went for a tough night, Bob. Uh, I look like that usually the next morning. First and 10 ball at the 34 yard line. Handoff goes underneath. Again, the fastbender who has now been taking over the, the running ch chores quite a bit. He gets about six on the carry. First, well, first time he's carried the ball. I mean, this series, he hadn't carried it up till now. The one thing there you see, Chris Fassbender. 
six foot one ninety, good size. The, what the Bucks are trying to do is nice, but it's very difficult to take a ball and drive it 80 yards in 14 or 15 plays without facing a second and long or third and long situation. Well, at this point, it's only second and four, so a good game. Handoff goes to Binder. Binder will get half of the four they need. He'll take it out to about the 40, 43 yard line. Actually, we'll call it closer to three. They're, they're just about a yard, maybe a little more than a yard shy of the first down. Was a good spot by the official, and they give it a third and short. 8.55 to go in the fourth quarter of this game, led by CB East over CB West, 7 to nothing. Everybody in tight again. Here are the Buck fans kicking left. The guy boost is right above them. Hand off the binder, got the first down, and then Sun takes it out to the 47 yard line. We didn't mention it, such CB West is considered the home team for this game. They do alternate every year, and West uh, is the home team here. And the East fans find themselves in the unusual situation of sitting on the visiting side of this field. This field, of course, serving as home ground for both CB East and CB West. And there are people ringing the field, standing probably about eight or ten deep. First and 10, ball to 47, 8.15 to go in this ball game. Sonsini goes into motion out of the tailback spot. Handoff goes underneath for short yardage to Dave Binder, I believe that was. Yeah, it was yep. Binder. He'll get about two, takes it up to the 49-yard line, will be a second down and eight. I'm just wondering how long they're gonna keep pounding like this before they may, you know, more than may take that inside handoff. Especially when they send Sonsini in motion, maybe take that inside handoff and try and get him deep. Well, the second along, so you could see something. Sonsini comes out of the game, and they're in that tight running formation. Moyle follows his blockers, takes it out over the 50 to about the 47 for a gain of about four. So we'll call it third down and about four. Now I guess get about three with his spot. It'll be third down and a long five, a long four, short five, if you will. Ball is about the 48-yard line. And here's your third and long situation. And Sonsini is not coming back in, which a surprise, I would say. That's all in the eye. And the pitch goes to Cleveland. Cleveland hops over one tackle, but not another. And he'll be shy of that first down as the ball is down to the 46, 45 yard line. But it'll be fourth and about two yards to go. Well, they got good penetration again from Ed West. And this is fourth and three. And they're going to go for it. I don't know. I, I think I would punt here. Uh, they're going to have a timeout. I believe Wes is going to call a timeout to talk it over. While they do, we're going to talk it over ourselves. Figure out what we want to do. We'll be right back. Stop into Michael's Restaurant in Montgomeryville. Open every day from 6 a.m. to midnight, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There are deli specials, and baking is done on the premises at Michael's Restaurant, just 400 feet north of the Five Points intersection in Montgomeryville. Now's the time to come to Kershaw and Fritz Tire Service for money-saving sale prices on tire after tire after Goodyear tire. Famous Goodyear tires like the Road Handling Tiempo, just $33.95, and size P155 ADR13. But there's not much time to get in on these savings. The sale ends November 30th, 1990. So hurry in to Kershaw and Fritz Tire Service and ride out on sale price Goodyear tires. Bahaska Travel and their wholesale ski division, Alphorn Ski Tours, has been serving the Delaware Valley for the past decade. We are located on Route 202 in Lahaska, adjacent to Peddler's Village. Our hours are 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily, evenings and Saturday by appointment. We specialize in Western and European ski destinations. Call for your free copy of our 1991 ski program, 215-794-8800. On fourth down, West decided to punt the ball. Chris Warren puts the ball into the end zone. As the ball bounced at around the 15, but took a big hop and just continued rolling right into the end zone. So 
The East gets a little bit of a break. That ball like, like it looked like it might die initially, but it looked like a pretty good punt, but it just had too much of a bounce as we go to Tom Drotar on the sidelines. Yeah, that time now, Coach Mike Pettin said to his team, if we can't stop them after the punt, then we don't deserve to win, and that's the philosophy on this sidelines. Gentlemen? So, Tom, you figure he's going to try and have the defense pull a big turnover here, see the what they can do. First down, and going absolutely nowhere on that first down carry was Dorto. Well, I was surprised that they even considered really going for it. It was a long three yards. And I figured, you know, you punch, get them down deep, you still have six minutes. They hold them here, they should get the ball back with about four to four and a half minutes left. The one problem they do will be facing, Bob, they only had one timeout left. Yeah, they called that timeout and then decided to punt the ball, so they had the one timeout left. So if they get on a drive, they won't be able to stop the clock after one more timeout. <laughs> Second down and 10. Morelli runs and he is knocked over by Mike Bell, who was actually on the ground when he made the tackle. Gain of a, that no gain at all, actually. We'll call third and 10 ball, still resting on that 20 yard strike. Well, we talked about defensive stars, certainly for the Bucks, Mike Bell, I think has been their outstanding defensive player in this game. Okay, here you're gonna see Morelli go on the roll. Looks like he may have a little bit of a crease there. There you see Mike, but unfortunately Bell closed it and really tried to hurdle over him, but it's third and 10, so big play here. Give some credit to Jay Bowell, who forced that play deep in the quarterback draw by Morelli. They'll take it to 25 and that's about it. And the Bucks get what they want. They'll get the ball back and they should get it back in fairly good field position. Tom Drocho, what do you think? Would you go for the block or you go for the return here? Well, I think you go for the return here because uh, you got a good guy back here, number eight, Matt Sonsini, who's broken quite a few this year, and uh, the chances are good that he could do it again at this late stage in the game. I've noticed a lot of the players on both sides are very tired. You might see some, somebody slip up in a big play. Okay, thank you. As Chris Freeland goes back with Sonsini, Schwab back to punt, and they go for the block and they don't get it. Ball bounces, Sonsini picks it up at the 45, gets to the 50 and slides down just over the 50. Good field position of Bob Atoa, they almost got to that ball. Yes, they did. Uh, the one thing I was going to say, if you go for the block and you don't get it, and you run into the kicker, that would have given East the first down, and that's the last thing you want to do. So the Bucks now have about 49 and two-thirds of a yard to go to tie this game, and then we talk about uh, if they score, what they do after that. Well, let's get through first things first. Ball at the 49-yard line, Bucks with a first down, and this the biggest possession of the game. They trail 7-0 with four minutes to go in this ball game. Hand off to Santini. He breaks it open at about the 35, the 30, excuse me, the 35 to the 40-yard line. Matt Santini, and I think if he hadn't run into his own, his own blockers, he may have gone the distance. Yeah, he sort of Ran up the backs of one of his big blockers in front of him is he's going to pick up 18 yards on the play. That inside counter that they tried for most, there's Coach Petten, they've tried most of the game, has not been successful. This time it was. First and 10, ball now resting just outside the 30 at the 31 yard line. 335 to go in this ball game. Now they move into an eye and Cleveland moves out into the wing. Fake pitch and a run by Moylan. I don't know that that wasn't a busted play, Bob. Uh, it didn't look good, whatever it was. I don't think it was. I think that was a planned play where he was going to fake and he was looking on the draw. Now, as it turned out, he picked up a good three yards, hey, maybe four. Started, Jordan. But I, I think that was a planned play because he really put the ball out there on a good fake. Now we're going to have, we have a timeout, now something is wrong, I don't know if it's Moylan as an equipment problem or he's hurt, and I think he had to get shoulder pad yeah. off here. So with 3.02 left, the Bucks are now facing a second and six. The Patriots are trying to do their darndest here as you see the sidelines. You know, they have the seven nothing lead. Taking a lot of time here, Bob. Yeah. A lot of time, they gotta get this play. They're gonna have to get up there and get this play off right away. Second and six, we'll call Second and seven, we'll call it, actually. Ball resting at about the 
28 yard line. Baxter's a split. In motion goes Sonsini. Moylan back to pass. He's rolling. Looking, looking, throws to a safety valve man. Cleveland who takes it up over the 20 to the 19 yard line. Chris Cleveland gets a first down as we have 2.20 to go in this game. Buckle your seatbelts, folks. We are in for a bumpy landing here. Well, that time he initially looked deep, trying getting Ryan Moore, number 81, but he was covered and then he went to his underneath man, Cleveland, his safety valve. And you're right, they've got it inside the 20 to about the 19. They've been here before, only to come over with no points twice. Now they've got to do it. We're at the two minute mark of the fourth quarter. Back to pass. Looking, looking, looking. He's rolling. He's running and he steps out of bounds. Moylan at about the 16, 17 yard line. That's a smart play by Moylan. He's not only, if nothing is there, he's got to try and get out of bounds and stop the clock. Remember one thing, of course, they want to get the touchdown, but hey, they can still get a first down inside the 10 yard line. That's what they really want to do. They want to be, they, if they can get the six, great, but they've got to get those 10 yards, and they've gotten two of them uh, at this point. It's a, uh, actually, a one, it's a second and nine, although they have on the scoreboard first and nine. We know better than that. Split wide, Ryan Moore. Backs are split. Cleveland. There's uh, the wide back. Back to pass. He's got Sonsini wide open to the 10, the 5, and he's got down onto the 5-yard line. That's Sonsini coming out of the wing back spot, and he's got a first and goal. Ball is marked at that 6-yard line. Bob Lang, this is excitement. Well, this, this is probably what this game's all about here, down to the 6-yard line. And that time they had Sonsini cross over from his right to his left. Boylan found him open in sort of that dead area and that's what you want to do get Sonsini the ball and let him make something happen 149 to go in this ball game seven nothing but the bucks with the ball on the five hand off the binder he's in the three the one he's not in he's on the one yard line the clock running 140 139 138 no rush here really for the bucks they can take their time because they don't want to give East, in fact, Bob, that ball looks like it's inside the one. It is. It's second and goal. Ball at the one. Is Jack Lockery? Yeah, he's in the game. Number 34. He's the man they like to go to in a lot of these plays. Handoff goes to Binder. He's, he's in. in. With 1.15 to go in this ball game. The Bucks have climbed within 76. And now we have the question. Tom Grotar. You're going for two, or you going to go for the top? You got to go for two, no question about it. I don't think it'll even be a, I don't think one point will come into their mind. They have to go for two points. It's too big of a game. Actually, not even a question in my mind. I don't think Bob Lang either. They got to go for the win here. Sudden victory, or well, whatever. But I'll tell you, the Bucks take the ball 49 yards into the end zone as Binder took it in. Sonsini with two great plays, a running play and a pass reception setting up this score. Let's take a look at it again, Bob Lang. All right, just a simple off-tackle play. Binder just lowers his head and actually got in fairly easily. Seven plays, 49 yards. Now, the question, Bob, that a lot of teams seem to, on two-point conversions, want to pass the ball. And you're only really two and a half yards out. Um, if you're a good running team, I, I think what may happen is you may see Moreland on some kind of an option. Well, where he think, gets the ball, he'll I roll. That, I, I would move the ball in one of the hash marks at that point, give you more wide field to run to. Looks like it's right in the middle. Yeah, they are, but they, when they come back, uh, Moreland like, may yeah. ask the uh, official to move the ball in one hash mark or the other. They have the option of doing that if, if they want to. If I'm CB East, I would blitz here. I mean, I, I would play a, a simple goal line type defense. I would try and send my linebackers up. Well, here we go. This is it right here you're looking at. It. Split wide is Sonsini. Moylan, back to pass. Looking, 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 waiting, throwing. He's got it. He's got it for the two. He's got it for the two. Simple box. He's the lead. 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 He
Maybe we can get Chris Cleveland. We'll see if Tom Drochart can get to him, possibly. Well, after the game, I guess we'll... Oh, sure. He's out on the field now. Tom, run out on the field. Bobby, for the <laughs> but, a great, well, we called it right, an option for Moreland, and he was really under the gun as Paul Jensen, number 40. There's Chris Cleveland. You know how he has to feel, but... Oh, yeah. Jensen was bearing down on Moreland. He held it until he couldn't hold it any longer, really, and he finally got rid of the ball. Hey, you might as well throw it into a crowd and hope your guy can get it. But let's remember one thing. There is still one minute and 15 seconds to go in this game. And with a quarterback like Mike Morelli, anything can happen. They have this game is far from off. over. East has all three of its timeouts left. All right, we have all setting penalties. There were personal fouls on each side, so the ball will be teed up at the 40-yard line by Peranian. But at the east side of the now, we've gone exact opposite. You have wild pandemonium on the west side, dead silence on the east side. Peranian will tee it up. Zerbian lends deep. We have a minute 15 to go in this ball game. West has just taken an 8-7 lead. Bob, I can't remember a more exciting game. Kickoff goes sh short, and it's booted by, at the five, by taking it back to Zerbe. He'll take it out to his five, to the nine-yard line, and he's going down. And oh, baby Bob Lang, with a minute seven to go, and the Patriots have their work cut out for them. Well, that time, Lenz and Zerbe had a little miscommunication there. Uh, the ball was actually headed to Zerbe, and Lenz tried to take it himself, and it went through his hands. And the other thing it did is it it knocked time off the clock as they're at their own nine yard line they've got real troubles here now the question is the the bucks defense can either play soft or go after the quarterback and they're way back the three defensive backs are standing back at about the 30 yard line quick pass in the lens lens takes it out over the 20 to the 25 yard line it'll be a quick first down just a quick reminder finally michael's restaurants piper classics Ten Talents Country Store, Carousel Flowers, Fritz and Kershaw, Goodyear, and Barbling Carpets have also brought us this game. We have an injured buck down on the field. Cleveland. Cleveland is Number hurt. They're, they're tending to him with 43 seconds to go in the game. What a game this has been. And if you want to watch it again, reminder, the VHS copies of this event and all other Suburban Sports Network events are available through Suburban Cable TV. Call 345 5154 Monday through Friday between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. And you're watching the Suburban Sports Network brought to you on the, com uh, the community television channels of Suburban Cable TV and Adelphia Cable Communications. And Bob Lang, I'll tell you, my Thanksgiving dinner, my stomach's going to not right now. I'm not going to be able to eat much dinner of this tonight because this has been just a great, great game. So people may look at an 8-7 to seven score and think, yeah, this is pretty dull. Well, the first half, not a whole lot of offense per se. Uh, but if you like defensive hitting, uh, turnovers, and just a good old knockdown, drag them out kind of a game, this is, this is it. And then, boom, all of a sudden the game's sort of lolling along and big play Morelli to Lenz for 70 yards. I don't know what would have happened if I hadn't stayed calm for this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> there you see the scoreboard telling everything now the patriots had some decent field position there at their own 25 that was a good call really to get them some yardage they picked up 16 there and now the bucks players are trying to get their fans here right in front of us excited well here we are the situation 43 seconds to go the ball on their own 25 as morelli back to pass throws He's got Zerbe at the 35. That'll be close to a first down. It should stop the clock again. Remember, East, I believe, has all their timeouts left. As far as I remember, they do. They have all three. It is a first down. Now, they call the timeout. East calls the timeout with a ball at the 35. Their first timeout of the half. 
Now, the other thing we also have to consider, they might possibly look at the chance of going for a field goal. Schwab is their kicker. <clears throat> now, we don't know what kind of range he has, but uh, also maybe I know uh, our good friend Tom Collins, uh, one of his favorite plays, hook and lateral, hook and lateral play. <laughs> You may, you may see, this is where you're almost going to have to try something fancy because at 10, 12, even 15 yards a pop, you're not going to get the ball down the field that quickly. They need a play of about 30 to 40 yards. Well, and the Buck defense knows that they're going to play deep, which is why I say you have 37 seconds to go. Ball to the 35. Another quick pop pass to Lenz, who probably is the most dangerous weapon on the field next to Morelli. You see if you can break one loose a little bit, get it out into Buck territory, and then go for a pot to about the 25-yard line where you try a long field goal. We'll find out. Split wide is Dave Zerbe. Back to pass, Morelli under a rush. He avoids a rush. He looks, he throws, he got Zerbe for short yardage. The clock will continue to run. It is not a first down. And now the teams will line up quickly as we're inside 25 seconds to go into this game. Morelli back. He looks, he throws real quickly, he's got Zerby again, this will be a first down, and it gets it down to about the 40-yard line yeah. with 14 seconds to go in the ball game. Clock is stopped while the, the uh, chains are moved. Now he needs a timeout by East. He needs about 15 yards here to get it in field goal area. Mike Schwab is the field goal kicker, and he has got a very good leg. We have seen him kick before. He can make a kick from 40 to 45 yards, but to do that, you have to get the ball down to the 25. Well, I would say they should, they'll find their best success maybe down the middle. I think West will pinch the sidelines and not try and allow them to get the ball along the sidelines and go out of bounds. So I would look for them to maybe try lens again in that quick popper see if he can they have 14 seconds and still the one time out you're right uh i would i would possibly look to lens or even zerby they have to pick up they're just inside the buck 40 they have to pick up a good 15 yards on the west side of the ball though tom drotar are you there yeah i'm here okay tom what do you got to do on defense you're gonna blitz I don't know. I, it's tough to call. I don't think he can blitz, though, because if they throw a seam pass, you're screwed. Well, here we go. They're, they're rolling out, and they do try a little bit of a blitz. Come on, get intercepted. Crying more down the sideline. He's not down, but that's going to do it. The clock down to five seconds. Ryan Moore with the interception, and folks, that's going to finish it up. The flag flies. We're going to have a personal foul, but that's beside the point as we have a little bit of a altercation in the middle of the field. More than a little bit of an altercation in the middle of the field. We have two teams. This is not. This is this is an ugly scene. Unfortunately, Coach Petten and Coach Green both in the middle of the field, trying to calm their teams down. This has been a tight struggle. Coach Petten pushing everybody aside. Coach Green pulling this player off the ball. And you have teams. You have teams that are just emotionally, emotionally hot. I mean, it's. This is just unbelievable, and they're going to stop the game right here, I do believe. Well, there's no sense, really, there's no need to run another play, as really the game effectively is over as the referee has Coach Petten. Petten and Green have words at midfield. Well, Green is very, very upset. I can understand that, but Green is extremely upset. Coach Larry Green, he's out the words of the officials. We have five seconds on the scoreboard, but I don't know if they're going to let this game continue or not. This is unfortunate, Bob. This is truly unfortunate. Tom Drotar, you have any idea? Let's see, Tom's going out to the middle of the field to see what's going on. Well, I, mean, I, I said, I, I think it's just a question of emotions here. Yeah, see, the referee just said, wind the clock down. That's yeah, it. Coach, wind it down. And Peyton, I mean, I, I, Unusual for him, he puts the one, the one in the air that's number one. Tom Drotar, what happened there? What happened was after the play, some, I'm not sure exactly initially what happened, but they cooled, they, they got both guys and cooled them down. Number 11 from CBA came running in out of nowhere and drilled someone in the back, and then number 33 for CB West grabbed him, threw him to the ground, and then it all broke out, and 
Uh, luckily, it, it ended after a short time, but that was really an ugly scene. And uh, the CB West player number 11 really had no business going in there at that point. Uh, that one, and they're not going to shake hands after the game. That was uh, Morelli for East, and that was Binder for West who got into it. The teams are running. West is just running off the field. This is truly unfortunate. A great game ending in unfortunate uh, the altercation in the middle of the field and uh, Bob Lang it really is a pity that it would end like this well yes it's somewhat understandable as you said a highly emotional game for both teams uh, I think probably a wise move and we'll be back with the final score Central Bucks West 8 Central Bucks East 7 Bob Bob and I and Tom and I and whoever else we'll all be back after this Remember the neighborhood tavern where you could relax with old friends and meet new ones as well? Cheese Steak Charlie's is that tavern. Check out the Pro and College, Prism and ESPN events on a wide screen, and a kitchen open until 1 a.m. Stop in for a hot cheese steak and a warm smile real soon. For Ruthie Toyota on Route 309 in Hatfield, we've got what it takes to make the difference. A modern facility housing a complete selection of Toyota cars and trucks, staffed by a courteous sales team to assist you, and our service department offering you drive through convenience, open Saturdays, too. Right now, when you mention this video coupon, you can purchase a 1990 Camry for just $11,990, or a standard bed truck for just $69,90 from Peruzzi Toyota. Remember, the Peruzzi commitment to customer service and low prices is the difference. Tilly's Family Restaurant would like to congratulate the Central Bucks East and West football teams on their fine winning seasons. Tilly's Restaurant offers breakfast, lunch, and dinner daily with a wide variety of menu items and homemade soups. Tilly's, good food at good prices and a friendly atmosphere. Out of the darkness, there was light, the age of discovery. There were flashes of brilliance, bold advancements. Advances in time. Now, out of the light comes the collection of Seiko's Age of Discovery. The past revisited, the past perfected by the most advanced timekeeping technology on Earth. Seiko, the future of time. One problem with contact lenses is all too familiar, cleaning them. So Johnson & Johnson created a lens you never clean. AccuView, the first disposable contact lens. Now the best solution is no solution, AccuView. AccuView contact lenses are available at the optical company. Come see Dr. Gottlieb or Dr. Spiesler for your eye examination and free trial lens fitting. We're located at Cross Keys Place Shopping Center behind Perkins Restaurant. Call 348-3331 for your appointment today. Back at War Memorial Field in Doyletown, Pennsylvania, where we have finished an exciting annual Turkey Day game between Central Bucks East and Central Bucks West. A game that was not decided until 1 minute and 15 seconds ago, actually until 7 seconds to go in the game. As West scores with a minute 15 to go, goes for 2, makes the 2 point uh, conversion, and then holds on to defeat CB East 8-7 to seven in this exciting game. Bob Lang, I'll tell you, it was a nail-biter right down to the end. Definitely was, and both teams deserve a lot of credit. Uh, first half, maybe we could liken it to sort of a feeling out process, a couple of a couple of fighters trying to punch each other to see what they can do, and I think Tom Drotar is right. down on yes, the field. Let's, let's go to Tom right now. We're going pick, to pick up on the uh, press conference. They improvised, and, and Moreland had a lot of pressure. Uh, I'd say initially the blocking was good, then it started to break down. And he held his poise and made the great throw. What can you say about the character of your team being down until the late minutes of the game? And it's a typical thing that's happened at CB West, you know, to come back and win at the end of the game. What can you say about these kids? Uh, I can give credit to both of you. I mean, I'm extremely proud that we hung in there. You have to be on our side to appreciate it. It was like this was our day. You know, they were steamrolling us. And... Uh, Everything we tried, uh, they looked like they had shut out. They were playing great defense. And just to keep our composure in a pressure game like this. After the game, when you did shake hands, I heard you talking to Coach Green, and you said, I think we should shake hands. Did he decline? 
No, no. He, he thought both teams emotionally right now had to be apart from one another. And, uh, you know, I, I, the more I think of it, I don't think the guys could have been cooled off that much to go through the line. Tom, can you ask Coach Peck? So, uh, uh, you know, I think we're going to try to get this thing squared away uh, extra point. when we meet on Tuesday. Can you ask Coach Peck? If you could say something about the situation that you have now with the state playoffs, yeah. where you're obviously one of the best teams in this in this region, but you probably won't get a chance to play in the state uh, in the state playoffs. How do you feel about that? Well, it, you know, first of all, I'm not going to... Uh, with a young team like this, we go 10-1, we win the championship. All right, yeah, I'm sorry, made a great catch. Uh, I, I got to be proud because, you know, the chances of getting in there are so slim. You have to have a perfect season. You, you know our league. You know how tough it is to go undefeated. Uh, you know, I wish uh, really well. Uh, I'd be lying if I told you, uh, you know, uh, you know we, we didn't want to go. Yeah, our problem, though, is after the preparation, this emotional game, if we were fortunate enough to go, would we have anything left? Uh, that's one of the problems with playing a schedule like this. Well, but, uh, you, you know, if they were to take the top four teams from the district and, and we didn't make it, then, then I'd really be upset. But it, it, it's such a, a chancy thing that uh, every year good teams are going to get left out, and it's happened to us twice. So. You have been the president of the uh, Pennsylvania High School yeah, Coaches Association. Is there anything that you can do now, or would you like to no. do anything now to change the system? It's really in the PIA's hands. You know, the association can say, let's expand them. When we pushed for playoffs, we had a format which would allow more teams in. We had a, at least a three-week playoff, and they only have two. So uh, you, with two, you, only, you have fewer teams. Okay, Coach, thanks a lot, and congratulations on a great game. Thank you. Gentlemen. Tom, very good. Let's see, maybe we can get uh, Coach Green down the other end of the field. Tom, uh, if you can run down there and uh, do, our, do our dirty work. <laughs> good questions, Tom. Bob Lang, uh, as we see... Coach Benton with another young fan talking to him right there. Bob Lang, uh, again, our observations on the game, it was it was clutch play on both teams' part. Uh, really well-played game in the second half. First half, a lot of turnovers, uh, and it really came down to a big play on East part right. and just some good, solid offensive football. On West's part uh, is what it comes. It really came down to in in the final analysis. Exactly. The, of course, the big play Morelli to Lenz, the 70-yard touchdown, <clears throat> and then Coach Penn talked about the character of his team. I mean, time is running down. They force the punt. They get the ball just about midfield. They know they have to take it in for the touchdown. If they don't, they lose the game. And in seven plays, they methodically move the ball down, move the ball down, and. Basically, okay. Okay, We're let's go, go back down to Tom. Tom Droitzer. He's got Larry Green here. Let's let's bring him up. I'm trying to get into the uh, press conference here, Coach Green. Um, I'm sorry that I'm coming in a little bit late. I'm sure you've discussed it already, but could you rehash what exactly happened towards the end of the game there? With them scoring, or with the with, with the, uh, the the problem with the benches clearing? Uh, you know, I don't have a lot to say about that. It's just uh, we need to take steps to make sure it doesn't happen again. It's a big ball game, emotional and. Uh, only takes a couple kids to say the wrong thing, and there were kids that fault on both sides. And uh, I'm sad that I'm sorry that happened, and uh, we'll take steps to correct it. I mean, we're not totally innocent, but we're not all guilty either. Did you feel that during the game there was a lot of dirty play going on on either side? No, I don't think dirty play. It's a physical game, you know. I mean, this, these kids have known each other since they were six, seven years old, and they, they were out to, to wreak havoc and, uh, you know, get all after people. And when you do that in a football game, emotions run high, you know. Uh, your defense played tremendously all game. How difficult is it to swallow this loss after having them by the neck and then letting them go? I know, it seems like a rhetorical question almost, but how are your feelings right now? It's the worst I've ever felt coaching a football game. It's going to take me a long time to get over it. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie to you. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. We're going to send all these kids home today with uh, the idea that we had the game won for, uh, I don't know, what, when they score the last thing, a minute to go, 50 seconds. That's tough. It's going to take a long time. Coach Green, we appreciate it. Okay, back to our two favorite turkeys up in the press box, Bob and Bob. Hey, we're here up in the warm booth. You're walking around in the field. Of course, it's 70 degrees, which is really kind of a foolish comment. It's not Tom, bad. Tom, you you see Green. You were close up to him there. What? Uh, and and you got Bob Lang, you just had a field. Tom, Tom Dorch, are you still with us there? I'm still here. Okay. It just seemed like total dejection on the part of Larry Green. Um, you know, I, I really felt like he might have wanted to say more, but just 
really kind of held back there. Yeah, he was very dejected, and as he said, this is the worst loss that he's ever had to take. Um, you know, what can you say when you're, when you're up with a minute to go in the game and you wind up losing, especially in the biggest game of the year, CB West, CB East, if you have them by the throat and you let them go, and not only, you know, did they lose the game in that type of situation, but it's happened so many times before. Um, East has been ahead and West comes back, or East comes in the favorite and West wins the game. It's, uh, you know, to be cliche, they're snake bitten. It's a, it's a very difficult thing for CB West to get over this uh, jinx, if you will. All right, Tom, thanks a lot. Good job on the sidelines today. Uh, Bob Lang, let's talk a little bit about the offensive and defensive players of the game. Uh, real quickly, I would say Andrew, uh, Wes on defense, and I'd have to say Sonsini on offense. He made it happen at the end. Exactly. Those are the two. Lens offensively for the Patriots and Bell defensively for the Bucks. And Bob, a great game. We couldn't have asked for anything more. The game wasn't decided until the final minute 15. Uh, great you are. So we've come to the end of the, the annual Thanksgiving Day Classic between Central Bucks West, Central Bucks East. Final score, the Bucks of West 8, the Patriots of East 7. For Tom Drotar and Bob Lang, this is Bob Friedman wishing you a happy Thanksgiving, a good holiday season, and we'll see you again when it's time for basketball. Again, the final score, 8-7 CB West over CB East. See you later, everybody. Have a great turkey day. Buffs and Huntington County with quality local programming. This is the Burden Community Television.